The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Fear. So many choices. Well, we know folks in fear well without. Woohoo! Fear! Hello and welcome to another episode of Beer Busters. We'll bring you the news and reviews of your favorite brews. My name is Dan Baker. I'm joined by my co-host and brewologist. Steph Hefner. And the demented and fermented Wayne Baker. You know, I'm editing the episode now that I wasn't at, that I couldn't be at the recording of. Uh, barra, barra. And you said something like the alleged, uh, or you had something in there. Do you mind that that is your like nickname? Oh, I don't care. Okay, cool. I like. I feel like I should have asked that ten years ago. Oh no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Whenever we came up with that, I wasn't sure what you were getting at there when you started explaining that. I didn't. I didn't. Know oh, okay. You were, what you were going to? No, I'm happy to be called demented and fermented. Both of those things are probably very true. Okay, cool. You you agreed with the fermented, but not the demented. Uh, ah, okay, fair. All right, cool. But hey, all that aside, uh, this is it's it's our second event after the world shut down for so long because of you know everything that happened. The first one was, of course, Bart's. Uh, was there a third one, another one in there somewhere? I don't believe so. I believe we did on location at um, Poor Man's when we were putting together the event for BART. And True. then we actually did the event for BART Right, in okay. Person. That's what I was thinking of, the one at Poor Man's. So this is the second event that we've recorded at after everything happened. We are at the 14th Wine and Dinosaurs at the Delaware Museum of Nature and Science. It is so cool to be back. We're in the Nature Nook, which uh, they have set up as like the, the volunteer break area. So there's the, the wonderful scent of pizza wafting <laughs> over to this table, and it will be distracting me the entire time. But I'm not getting any now because we made the uh, important and obligatory Wawa stop on the way here. Uh, but I'm super excited to be here. It's so cool to get outside Pennsylvania, where we are from, and get to try uh, breweries that we may not necessarily get to try otherwise and talk to the people that are with them. Um, for longtime listeners, you may remember the episodes that we did before, one in 2016, one in 2019. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool time, and I really hope that we get a chance to walk around and experience the event because I really liked everything that was happening last time. And there was a uh, an auction to go home with a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, it sold for $1,200, and there was a part of me that almost bid 1000 and I'm so glad that I didn't. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't have won. I forgot about that. But there the was Pappy a small auction. part of me that was like, all right, I've had a few beers. I feel like I can make this happen. Let's do it. I'm glad that I didn't. Um, <laughs> we do have a little bit of housekeeping to run through. Remember, uh, you can follow along with all of the shenanigans, Twitter, Instagram, threads, thank you, and TikTok. Uh, we are at Beer Busters. There is Facebook, where we are Beer Busters Podcast. Uh, you can go to beerbusterspodcast.com, or you can add slash shop and get all the, the cool merch that Wayne designed. Uh, YouTube, we are Beer Busters Podcast. And on Patreon, we are Beer Busters. Well, uh, the event started. Uh, it, it started eight minutes ago. Uh, Dana and Rich are, are rounding up our potential guests. I'm sure they will be up here shortly with beer in hand. So why don't we just get to it? Let's do it. Here we are, the 14th Wine and Dinosaurs. There's a meadow in front of us. And a cave. And dude says you, gentle hands. It's all fake. <laughs> Not the tarantula. <laughs> First up for the day, returning guest who we uh, spoke to before at Wine and Dinosaurs, we have Rob from Belfont. How are you, Rob? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I took a sip already. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Steph was very excited, and, and she wanted to make sure we got you on the show first because, I mean, one, we talked to you before, but two, the beers that you brought uh, speak to our kind of beer. So since Steph already took a sip, Steph, what is the first one? Or Rob, what is the first one? This is our Doc Marzen, uh, you nice. know, uh, Oktoberfest style lager. Great nice style, multi. great name. <laughs> <laughs> yes, agree. I assume this is uh, brewed seasonally for the season that we're in right yes. now. Yes, yeah, we uh, we featured it at the, the Delaware Sagarbund Oktoberfest last weekend. Um, oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. If there's any left, it'll be at the uh, Delaware Beer Fest. So, yeah. Mm. This is the best part about September. Oh, really yeah. Is. Oktoberfest yeah. beers. Meritson's Fest beers, Oktoberfest, yeah, it is. Uh, I love the fact that you brought an Oktoberfest style and not a pumpkin beer. Uh, well, we do have a pumpkin beer, but uh, I mean, know, we're, we're, fine. we're trying to make that one last to Halloween. You know, yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody is like bringing out their pumpkin beers earlier and earlier. You know, July 1st hits and you're like, pumpkin beer, and you're like, this... This is way too early. It's yeah. all Southern Tears' fault. I blame it. It really is. Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they started shipping in like July. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We we waited until September first, and uh, I I was at a, an event that first weekend in September, and someone was like, 
pumpkin beer? Really? And I was like, it's September at yeah. least. Like this, <laughs> this is like, this is when it's acceptable a little bit. Well, does, we waited as long as we could. Does, it doesn't Starbucks start pumpkin spice latte September 1st? Probably. I feel like that date is like meaningful that, to hardcore pumpkin Yeah, fans. that should be the barometer. Whenever Starbucks does it, everything else can follow suit. Yeah. It's not a holiday at this point. I mean. <laughs> Although I did hear recently that pumpkin spice is kind of on the outs. Apple cider is the next thing. Yeah, apple cider has been getting a lot more Which love. Which I do love apple cider. And I don't want to be the hipster, but like I've loved apple cider my entire <laughs> life. So if this is now popular. I, like, I was a nerd before it was cool. I liked apple cider before it was cool. Yeah, What's I next? mean, I like apple cider. And I'm really getting into ciders, you know, ever since we had Plow- Ben from Plowman yeah, on. I yeah. got my plowshare yesterday, I my saw. first plowshare. Oh, I'm very I saw excited. the post, yes. So I have been drinking more ciders. I don't know. You know, I feel like beer drinkers are expanding. I mean, just look at some of the beers you brought. We're going to drink a wild berry sour. Um, you also, the other, oh, the Belgian quad. But mm-hmm. like, there's yeah. a, a fruit forward beers have been popular for quite some time now. And I think people, you know, or in, ciders is just like the adjacent to that. Pretty, true. pretty much, Birds. the yeah. fruited sour category is, is just exploding. Uh, you, you can't you can't get away from them, and they sell really well. So people love them. Mm-hmm. People love Definitely. them. Absolutely, that's good. I mean, I would rather that than like the hazy IPAs, which I'm also happier on the ads. No offense, anybody. Well, speaking license. of hazy IPAs. Are we going to move on? Well, to I'm next? assuming this I did wanna, I did opaque ask, John. Yeah, that definitely looks hazy. <laughs> I had one quick question before we move away from this fantastic beer that we are enjoying first. Sure thing. Um, so we picked it. First, because we like the name and we like the style. But I know famously we are very um, particular about pronouncing beer styles correctly on this show. And so we've all been saying Mertzen for a while because I think that's like the, the technical way. But that kind of ruins the pun. True. Like Doc Marzen. Doc Marzen sounds better. So what's your opinion on the Marzen? Uh, I would Mertzen? say Martzen. Martzen. Uh, yeah. Okay. But yeah, very close to Doc Martin. Yeah. 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 I'm okay with that. I'm okay with a, a, a lean towards a certain pronunciation. In order to get a pun, I feel like the pun. Oh yeah, the pun. The, the pun takes priority. Any yeah, sort of pronunciation. The pun takes priority. The pun takes priority. So we are moving on to uh, what is this one? This is a uh, Biggie Small. So this is uh, this is actually a blend of our Big Wonder Double IPA and our Small Wonder Session IPA. Uh, you know, Delaware's uh, state motto is Small Wonder, and so uh, we we have our our Small Session IPA. That's cute. Now you don't small wonder. you don't often hear about blending IPAs. When you talk about blending beers, typically typically it's sours and Belgian styles. Mm-hmm. So t- how talk about that process? Yeah. So um, what we uh, we had we typically had both beers on draft at the same time, the big wonder and the small wonder. And one day somebody said, you know what, I want to I, I I love the big wonder, but you know I I need I, I need to you know be able to make it home tonight because it's a double IPA. It's usually eight percent. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it down, and I you know half and half blend with the small wonder, and you end up with a nice six percent IPA. Um, the grain bills are similar, although of course the double IPA has a little more malt, so you get that higher extraction rate, and you get that higher ABV, mm-hmm. um, and it has some different hops in the hop bill. So, mm. so I'm curious, mm-hmm. do you ferment and finish out both of these beers, and then blend them at the yes. end. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's really interesting. So this, this is like a blending that could happen. Yeah, this, at so the this bar. is this is a blending that happened in the keg. Um, <laughs> okay, but uh, you can if they're both on draft at yeah. the same time, you can just get a half and half. Yeah, yeah, just like black mm-hmm. and tan style. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I we were at um, Lost Boy Cider in Alexandria, Virginia, and there's one bartender there that is particularly talented at this. But I often like to have them mix some of the ciders. Mm. I think that's really fun to encourage people to mix ciders or beers and come up with new concoctions. We did. You came up with. Was bloody bloody moose. moose, bloody moose, <laughs> at, and he ended up starting yeah. to, when Kyle was still at Oak Brook. He would start to blend that in the keg, and that was a new beer. And that I was, was so just happy from about that. Playing around and mixing things, and what a what a cool idea! I think it's something that should be encouraged. Yeah. It's like the the new evolution of the black and tan. Yeah, we always have um, we always have black or sorry dark beers on um, on nitro uh, year round. So we have we we usually have a stout or a porter. Um, right now we have a stout and a black lager. Um, at the at the tap rooms, and uh, so half and halves are just something that we we can do anytime. And, I love that. Oh, that's awesome. I, this beer is really good. I like this a lot. I would figure from like the color, you'd expect it to be like a, like a hazy IPA, mm-hmm. but it's 
it, it doesn't finish that way. It finishes dry. It's nice and hoppy. It's yeah. it's this is great. I it's, love this. It's, it's got like a, a fruitiness to it, but not. It's subtle. The pillowiness. It's, yeah. It's that the pillowiness, pillowiness. Yeah, kind so of turns me off to hazy. I will usually. tell you, it's not uh, it's not planned to be a hazy IPA. Uh, so. <laughs> hey, okay. As hey. long as it tastes good, that's the it, important thing. It tastes thing. fine. Yeah. Yeah. We we uh, we are lucky to be uh, in an era where uh, nobody wants a clear beer anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Get as away much with as something. That so hurts my heart a little bit, but. I mean, you didn't put any flour in it, right? We did not. Okay. Okay. No flour. <laughs> <laughs> a little uh, bit of wheat. <laughs> so you brought bonus beers. I did bring bonus beers. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to crack beers. open this. This is our Joe Jam Wild Berry Sour. Nice. Um, I love the can art. As I was saying to you guys earlier, um, we are only a few miles here from uh, our esteemed president's home. And when he comes home on the weekends, uh, it's usually Friday at rush hour or uh Monday uh, morning rush hour when he's trying to go back to D.C. And uh, he, he, uh, they, they close down parts of the road so that the convoy can, can make its way to the airport. And, uh, and that creates a bit of a Joe Jam. And so that's... Oh, <laughs> and, and so we, have, uh, yep. we decided to come out with this sour series that has a, a, um, a bunch of different jammy fruits and vanilla. So you have a sour beer that... Um, in this case, it's a mixed wild berry, but we also have a blueberry, a raspberry, just straight blackberry, um, just kind of those jammy mm-hmm. berry fruits um, and a little bit of vanilla to round it out. The aroma is very jammy, which is not a descriptor I use very often. I've realized recently that I'm a jam guy, and I know how that sounds. <laughs> in our fridge, we have an entire <laughs> shelf in the door that's like all jams. I'm okay with that. The brand, that uh, the fancy French brand with the gingham cap that uh, uh, oh, I've had that that's brand. in like cursive I yeah. forget no, what it's called that's no. like all like, their fig jam oh, oh wow and they're mixed berry jam. Ooh, yes and I was at Trader Joe's and realized they also have strawberry jam which is not oh yeah oh Trader Joe's jams are really mighty nice. bread Actually, yeah. mighty bread strawberry jam is incredible anyway this beer it, sm- <laughs> it does smell like a jam like it smells well, like I want to spread this on some toast look at what it just did it just like started that conversation it all t- it right away took us there mm-hmm. and there's no lactose in this right no. and I appreciate that yeah. because oh that God, doesn't overshadow the fruit sometimes I feel mm-hmm. like when you put lactose in a beer like this it it oh muddles the fruit flavor, and that sure. aftertaste isn't as nice. Um, but I love that I can see through this mm-hmm. beer. It's not, like, milkshakey. I'm yeah. always a little, like, I don't want to say paranoid, but whenever whenever the word sour is introduced, like I said, if there's lactose in it, it feels weird. But also, like, you guys ruined me the first time I had a sour <laughs> because I made the worst face in the world. What did we um, get there? It was, like, a crazy sour Ma- IPA. Uh, magic, yeah. we magic were, hat. Yeah. It was a magic hat something or other. We but it was incredibly it. It was sour. It was not good for your first <laughs> I think even the can art was, like, a guy doing this. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. So now I'm, like, paranoid whenever I see a sour. But this... This, I would argue, is more berry than sour, which for me, I, mm-hmm. I love. This is, well, this the, is so the, good. The vanilla does smooth out the, down uh, a little. Smooth yeah. out the sour notes a lot. Yep. This is incredible. I love this. Yeah, Excellent. it's, it's very fruity, and it doesn't have that, yeah, like that stingy jolliness that can mm-hmm. sometimes be too oh much. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, kind of, it's subtle. It's very refreshing. Who yeah. does your can art? So this is a, a local artist uh, named Sarah DeFlavis. Uh, she owns a graphic design company called Sassafras Studio, and uh, she, she is uh, our brand uh, our brand. Very designer. Cool. I, I love, love that. Yeah, it's they're cool. really cool and it's super recognizable. I feel mm-hmm. like if you see these on a shelf, you'd be like, "Oh, those are Belfont beers." Mm-hmm. I like that. I don't want to jump ahead too much, but I love the art on the next one too. Right. So this that's is awesome. Our, yeah, this is our Clay Monster Belgian Quad, and uh, um, so some of your uh, Delco friends will be aware that just south of Delco is uh, Claymont. Uh, just Wait, off that's where the wine. That's where the total, total wine. wine is. Yep. That's why I know mm-hmm. that name. Yes, it is. And uh, so we have, uh, if you have a few too many of our Belgian quads, uh, you become the clay monster. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you Don't you just become the clay monster from driving around that parking lot, though, too? Well, <laughs> could be. Does that make you crazy? Could be. So we've got the, uh, the, the mud monster uh, coming down uh, Philly Pike there. Uh, you know, he's got the burned out Wawa and the Honda Civic. <laughs> oh, my he's God. Got a he's got a, a, pack of, uh, a pack of cigarettes in his hand, and he's wearing his, uh, his Belfont slides. <laughs> Menthol brand <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> Can this is amazing. Other oh, brands yeah, of cigarettes the are Wawa available. The Wawa and the A uh, it has fallen on the ground. The <laughs> oh, wa- my oh my gosh, this is just like this is fantastic. Uh, was this this can <laughs> art approved by by the authorities? <laughs> by any, uh, anyone? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no Maybe. cease and desist Acc- yet. Acclaimed far and wide uh, in Delaware. <laughs> oh my gosh! Now I want to go check out all of your cans. Yeah. Now, do you like give her ideas and she we runs do. with it? Or? We do. Okay. Um, th- there's uh, there's there's uh, often some some prompting uh, on our part. Um, the idea for the Joe Jam can, in particular, of course, you see you got the motorcade. 
uh, you know, blocking traffic. Yeah. And you've got the ice cream cone in the hand of our president coming out the window, ice cream Joe. Um, you know, <laughs> and everybody's like just stuck on the side of the road waiting. Um, and that was, you know, we were like, uh, this, you know, you know, we're, I'm, we were my one of my partners and I are constantly moving beer from one of the one of our tap room locations to the other location. And we have to go right past his house to get to the other location. <laughs> and it'd be like Friday, you know, or like three o'clock and you're like, oh, they're getting ready to block the road again. I hope I make it through. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you have to leave snacks in your car just in case. Yeah. So if you do get caught in the traffic jam, you're like, all right, at least yeah, I have snacks. Because you could be there for half an hour. They just shut the road down. And, oh, wow. and, you know, until the motorcade comes through. Wow. I love this label. Jesus. I know, right? Yeah, the Clay Monster <laughs> label is pretty awesome. That's also. something that you need to, like, print on, like, and a frame. Mm-hmm. Like, I would buy a poster Yeah, of a that t-shirt or a poster, art. definitely. So, that, or uh, even a big sticker. Oh, that'd be awesome. What? what uh, we do have some stickers, uh, and I'll have to make sure I, I get some to you guys. Uh, but we, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to bring this beer to highlight it is because Ooh. October 7th, I don't know when this podcast is dropping, but hopefully before October 7th. But if it's not, either way. <laughs> um, we are having our Clay All Day Festival at our tap room on Old Capitol Trail. That's and so fun. So we're just going to feature a guided Clay Monster tasting with our brewer. And... Uh, we have uh, five or six different varieties of clay monster. You've got, uh, you know, uh, a couple of years, so you can do a mini vertical, oh, cool. uh, you know, you know, a, a 19, 20, 21 kind of thing. Um, we have our, yep, there you go. It's I'm going to share it on mm-hmm. our social. Ooh. So um, uh, there's going to be a sour clay monster variety, uh, an oak aged clay monster, uh, you know, like a wine barrel or Ooh. a beer barrel, mm-hmm. uh, bourbon barrel. So, yeah. We're, uh, we're looking forward to where we have uh, food trucks and uh, a maker's market in the afternoon, live music all day. Oh, so, so fun. This, oh, that sounds this cool. beer is tasty, so I can see why you would want to do an event just centered around this beer. I haven't tasted it yet. It smells very nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's really good. I'm sure this episode Ooh. won't be out by then, so we'll make sure we share it. Yeah, on yeah we just thinking. I'm not so I was sorry, trying to do the math. Sorry to our listeners if you missed out on this event, but that just means you need to follow <laughs> us on social media so you're in the know. Yeah, yeah if you want the most <laughs> up-to-date information, that is what you should do. So am I seeing right that this is 10.2%? Yeah, it's a it big is. one. It I mean, it's does, a quad. I know, it doesn't feel like 10, no, though. I mean, there's a little has, bit of heat in the back end. It has a very deceptive yeah. smoothness to I, it. I would have figured... Seven and a half, eight, mm-hmm. somewhere around mm-hmm. there. Yeah, this this yeah. could be dangerous. Yeah, which is like a double, triple category. Yeah. you know, and this yeah. is this is definitely a quad. Um, yeah, and I think what gives it away, and I say this a lot about Belgian styles, is when you can't detect the heat of the alcohol, you really get that candy sweetness. Mm-hmm. Yes, and like, yes. The more you get that, the more that's like, oh, there's a lot of booze in here, even if it doesn't feel hot, but it does make a drink very, I'm very smooth. Gonna- this <laughs> it's very good, but I don't want a lot because it's so strong. Yeah, <laughs> it's tempting. It's so it drinks good. really easily. For you guys, it is. We don't get to record in person that much anymore. This is like a diamond in the rough. So to be able to actually be sitting with the person we're interviewing and drink the beer with you, like mm-hmm. this is like, I miss this. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. miss this a lot. Me and too. this is like a really Stupid good pandemic. beer to have. Oh, yeah. No. I was just gonna, speaking of, how was COVID for you? Oh, it, was, <laughs> it was wonderful. It was, the, it was the best time of my life, um, I, honestly. Uh, I uh, had so much fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I realized when we, uh, we were, I was looking through uh, like the notes the last time we were here, and I was like, it was 20. It was like literally right before uh-huh. the pandemic last yeah. time we were here. Yes, so everyone was. we talked to today, we have not had a COVID corner with. Because yeah. ever since the pandemic. Oh, see, we should have made a pact that we weren't going to bring up the C word today. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have. But <laughs> oh, We can edit this out. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I figured if we ever got stuck for a topic, we haven't talked to any of the breweries here, how COVID affected them. So that's always there. But we don't have to talk about it. We can yeah. keep it light. Well, and it's usually we, not we managed hard for to keep us to it going. Yeah, you're yeah. still here. I mean, that's yes. the important yeah, thing. That's you're still we owned our own canning machine, so we were able to uh, do canning uh, in-house. Uh, we oh, weren't nice. relying on somebody else to come in and bring a machine and, and, and materials and everything. Uh, we printed our own can labels on a laser printer in the office. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, you know, just little, like, three-and-a-half by three-and-a-half labels. So many versions of these that were just a little rectangle um, just so we could, you know, get new stuff out every week because we were only allowed to do to-go to- to- sales. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Now, where are your cans available besides, obviously, at the brewery? So both tap distribute? rooms. Um, we have uh, Old Capitol Trail near Price's Corner uh, in Delaware and Marsh Road, which is a little bit south of Delaware County. Um, we currently have three varieties available uh, in distribution, which is our Small Wonder Session IPA, uh, Easy E, which is a New England Session IPA, and um, our Orange Street Ale, which is our, our flagship. Uh, it's cream ale with orange blossom, honey, and sweet orange peel. Mm. Did you have Easy E last time? I feel like that might have been a beer we had. 
I believe it was. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that sounds good. Yeah, familiar. that one and the uh, the key lime the key lime sour. Oh, mm-hmm. I remember really liking mm-hmm. that one. Did you mm-hmm. know they make key lime uh, Kit Kats now? No. I feel like I've seen that. Yeah, I yeah. saw that somewhere. I, side note about the Kit Kats. Um, <laughs> side note about Kit Kats. <laughs> about Kit Kats. <laughs> so well, let's just keep Rob here all day. I know. And we'll I just know. talk to Rob all day. Yeah, I'll come back. Good, yeah. <laughs> um, Kit Kats. So, you know, we're starting to get like the different flavor ones here now, but the rest of the world had them. Do you mm. know why that is? I feel like you're going to tell us. I am going to tell us. Okay. Uh, because here in the U.S., it's Hershey that owns it. Everywhere else, it's Nestle. Nestle is not afraid to promote different crazy flavors. Oh. Hershey has always been traditional, but now uh, we're getting the different ones. I didn't realize it was different ownership. No, I didn't yeah. know that either. I, well, you can just order them internationally. Right, yeah. I mean, We've done now that. It's, now it's easier, but it used to be like somebody had to go to Japan or remember to bring them home. Mm-hmm. The matcha Kit Kat? I have one of those oh. in my fridge. I love the A guy at work went to Japan. There's a white a chocolate home. one, right? Yeah. White, like cho- white, chocolate. white chocolate's not with chocolate. I like white chocolate. White chocolate's not chocolate. White chocolate I agree is still with you. good. It's not chocolate. <laughs> it's not chocolate. I mean, but and it's, it's literally good. not chocolate. I mean, it's literally, you're right. Sorry, it is I'm, liter- I'm, sorry, I'm peeking. I know, we're like blowing out the audio here. It's literally not chocolate. That <laughs> we're going to have to do sound check to point out. That is true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Rob, if the folks want to find you on the socials, what are what's your handle on all the social medias? At Belfont Brewing Co., on Instagram and Facebook, um, BelfontBrewingCompany.com on the interwebs. The interwebs. No Twitter, because X. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're just on threads now ourselves. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, we just had the We just had the conversation. <laughs> we just talked about that like 10 minutes ago. Uh, we should <laughs> join threads. Yeah. yeah. No, I, it's, yes, please do. Because do it. Um, I love interacting with the people mm-hmm. that are there, but I feel like the beer community would benefit from growing a little bit on that platform. And I, I like the stuff that I... I'm usually the one that posts on there, but the stuff that we post on there is typically different than what we post mm. everywhere else. Yeah. And I would love to have more breweries that we actually know on there so we can interact. Like I interact with Lady J all the time because they're, they have a huge presence on there, but not too many breweries locally are, are on there or if they are, they don't post too much. So Rob, join threads and interact with us. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Rob, thank you so much for, yep. uh, for kicking the day off for us the right yes. way. These beers are incredible. And this can art seriously is unbelievable. Yes. yes. That's fresh studio. Shout I won't. Out to Sass Fresh Studio. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me. We no, appreciate course. it. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Thank anytime. you. Cheers. Come on, cheers. cheers. It's been a while since I could say this, but stepping up to the table now yes, is uh, Jimmy from Autumn Marsh Beer Project. How are you? Splendid. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> of course. Thank you for joining us again. Um, longtime listeners may remember that last time we were here, you joined us as well. Uh, and a lot has happened since then, from what I gather, including as recent as yesterday. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. I didn't set a timer. <laughs> I was going to set a timer to see how long it would take for us well, to mention I the medal. Uh, one, yes, a lot has happened since the last time we spoke to Jimmy. But yeah, like this is big. This is probably like yeah, one no, of the definitely. bigger things. Yeah. But first off, congratulations, yes. GABF Thanks. winner. Yes. That's so cool. Uh, so, I mean, what, how, how does it feel? Uh, I mean, we are just over the moon. Super excited. Uh, so we won a gold medal in uh, Belgian sour beer category mm. at the Great America Beer Festival. Um, which was yesterday, and we, the whole brew team was just super pumped. Text messages were flying around, even like just within like the Delaware craft brewing community, um, which is pretty, it's small, but pretty tight, like messages going around to other brewers. And yeah, it was just it was so wonderful. Um, and really, I think like just a testament to the work that our brew team puts in, the attention to detail to our sour program. Um, which I think, like, we were just getting off the ground when I talked to you guys last time, yeah. 2019. And, like, we are, like, seeing the fruits of that labor over the years now. Because, it, I mean, it literally takes years to make these beers. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Congratulations. That's Thanks. That's amazing. Thanks. Uh, I remember loving the beers last time uh, we spoke to you. I'm sure the ones that are here will be no exception to that. But it's so cool to see. I mean, basically from, like you said, you were getting off the ground. It's from the beginning to now you're a GABF winning brewery, yes. which is incredible. Yeah, so to cool. see that evolution is just so great. And it, I, I also feel like we've gotten to a point in our podcasting career where we're a little jaded. Like early on, we, we, you know, we, we connected with a lot of breweries when they were just starting out and sort of like we grew together as they were like growing and and now it's kind of like the feeling like it doesn't happen as much but but now we do we have auto march yeah. as well where we we saw the whole evolution 
So that's pretty cool. I also don't think we've had a medal winner on the show this quickly after minute winning yeah. the medal. Oh, yeah, so quickly. So quickly. We did, we did cheers have, from the crowd. <laughs> we did have Bon on when they got the medal mailed to them. He right, had just I remember that. Gotten yeah. the medal yeah. in the yes. mail, so we were holding the medal. Yes, I do but remember yeah, that. This is this is terrible. And Thompson Island won a medal yesterday too. Thompson Island Two won. Delaware, um, was there a third Delaware brewery that won? And there was a third Delaware brewery that won a gold medal. Because um, I think I was like, there were more breweries in Delaware that won medals than Pennsylvania. I think I was thought yeah. that to myself as I was looking. So, our, so our neighbors, uh, Musings Fermentation Underground, also won a gold medal. That's and cool. Yes. I think it was Specialty Saison. Um, what? And I think our brewer actually pointed this out, which I think was a, a cool observation. At all of the medals that the Delaware breweries won were all in like this, like sour beer mixed fermentation kind of realm of craft beer which i thought was like wow there's something in the delaware water like yeah just <laughs> it's kind of amazing delaware historically you always thought ipas you know yeah. with dogfish and 60, 60 minute, minute IPA, and yeah. dewey with all their hazies and you know that's usually what you think of so it's pretty cool to show hey delaware we're more than yeah. just ipas we're right? doing other things <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of ipas but though, let's talk about this an might IPA. be a good transition <laughs> we do have an ipa in our glasses so what you have in your hand is a session IPA. It's called Table Juicy. Ooh. So we wanted to make a table IPA, quote unquote. Um, so something really easy drinking that was just um, that we had on tap at the brewery pretty frequently, um, and it's super approachable. Like uh, the low ABV, low bitterness. Like we are in a, an area. Autumn March is in an area where. People appreciate light beers. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something that kind of like checks the IPA box and the light beer box. Um, so yeah, table juicy. I, I really like it. I do too. Yeah, I, I it has a, a more of a traditional IPA character to it. Do you feel, feel like, like we're starting appreciate. to appreciate IPAs again? I have always appreciated a good, simple West Coast style IPA that is like nice and hoppy, sometimes light. I, the, the, the New England, the hazies, not for me, but this is always a style I've, I've loved. I think we've come back to that. Especially it's if it's enough. a session one. Like, it's this, this is like, it's, it feels as light as a good session, like a lager, like a four, four and a half percent lager. Mm -hmm. But it's got the hoppiness of the bitter. And you can tell, obviously, it's not a lager, duh. Uh, but like this, it has the same <laughs> refreshing, lager, <laughs> it has the same refreshing characteristics that I would expect from that, plus the, the hoppiness to really amp it up. This, I, this, this is great. I love this. I love how easy drinking it is. It's, yes, yeah, I it agree. goes down smooth, but it's still. You still get the hop character, yeah. but it doesn't like punch you in the face. It's exactly. not like over the top. Yeah, yeah, real easy drinking, like you said. Appeals, I'm sure, broadly. What uh, what hops are in it? So, this is a beer that we brew um, several times a year, right? Well, we're a small batch brewery, and we will actually rotate through our like dry hopping regimen on this particular beer, batch to batch. Okay. Um, so it's not exactly the same every time. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I don't know the exact. Hey, no worries, <laughs> no worries. I, I will, I will settle for a rotating profile. Yeah. So oh, no, I we like that. we try to so we keep the core beer very uh, very similar. So it's the same, it's the same yeast, the same malt bill, but we do uh, kind of add so a little bit different flair each time with yeah. the hops. Not like you know going off course too much, but um, yeah, it's just, it's also fun for the brewers as well, just to be like, hey, I want to try this combination of hops yeah. and boil versus dry hop. And, like, how does that turn out? Yeah. I mean, it also encourages creativity. You're also, you know, using probably fresher ingredients um, because it's, you know, whatever you have and you can get right away. I like I like that. It's tasty. It also encourages people to come back and try it again. Because yeah. you know how sometimes people are like, well, I'm not going to have that. I've already had it. You yes. Know? Well, you haven't had this you version. Right. This version, this batch. I drank it really fast because I want to drink it. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say I that. I am excited for the Schwartz beer. Like, I demanded, Jimmy, that you were early in the show because as soon as I saw you at a Schwartz beer, I was like, I need that in my life. All right. I need this in your life. So talk to us about this lovely concoction. So we brewed um, this German Schwartz beer, which is it's, it's a black lager, uh, back in July. And with the intention that, hey, late summer, we're going to release this Schwartz beer because um, it's like right around the turn of the seasons. Kids are going back to school. The parents are excited. And it's the return of dark beers to, mm -hmm. the, to the menu. Like some real dark beers. I'm fine with a year-round Schwartz beer. I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> fine with that. <laughs> Not everyone share, shares that. Um, but we, we like to keep a dark beer on, on tap 
year round. But now that um, it's September, we have a few on tap, but this was the first one that we put on. Oh. Um, and uh, we just to give this one a little different flair, we uh, infused the secondary fermentation with a um, locally roasted coffee beans mm-hmm. from this pizza place called Bivouac Pizza. They roast their own coffee beans as well. And pizza um, and coffee. Yeah, I, w- I wanted to make sure I heard that right <laughs> too. Odd combo. Yeah. yeah. So their their uh, bivouac pizza is a pizza truck that frequents the brewery. They come there and they also roast their own coffee beans. So we were like, hey, we we're doing an event with them in August. We're like, why don't you bring your own coffee beans over and we'll put it in this beer that we're making. Uh, and that is why it is a coffee Schwartz beer. It's mm. delightful. I haven't tasted it yet, but it smells I'm, really I'm glad you said there was coffee in it because I tasted it and I don't want to be the idiot. It's like, hey, is there coffee in here? And then it's <laughs> yeah. no. And I'm like, well, I'm just, I'm off then. So this, this the coffee went into um, kind of like the, the post-secondary fermentation where there's, um, you know, you're going not, you're not going to get the bitterness of the, the coffee beans um, because it's, it's happening at lager temperature. So like 55 degrees, mm-hmm. you're just getting that, like co- that nice, like smooth coffee flavor. So that's why it's not like overpowering. Yeah. It's almost the notes you get when you cold brew coffee. Yeah, exactly. Say, yeah. It has a cold brew character yep. to it. Yeah. yeah. It's closer so to a you cold You get more the, brew. the fruity mm-hmm. notes instead of the bitter notes of the coffee. And it's a little sweeter oh, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I really love mm. this. And not our first rodeo with the uh, coffee beer. So it took us a while to like piece all that together. Like, <laughs> this is how beer. coffee in beer works well. Yeah, it's definitely a science. So we also heard that you are the president of the Delaware Brewers Guild. I am, yes. How's so, that? Um, so it keeps me busy between <laughs> uh, running Auto March and keeping you know a, a great business going, but then also um, being part of a really cool community of Delaware craft breweries that you know really we're we're both defending and continuing to advocate for the interests of craft beer in the first state. Yeah. So that's kind of like high level what we're trying to do. That's so cool. Well, cool. how long have you been involved in that? Uh, so we, Audemars has been members of the guild for about four years since we, um, uh, you know, originally uh, started our business and I've been the president for the last two years. Oh, okay. Cool. So, cool. and it, it's, um, it's been, it's been, um, uh, it, there's awesome like camaraderie with like getting brewers together and working on kind of shared goals like you know on on one hand you know we're all competitors but at the same time we're also like part of this community that you know we're trying to kind of you know raise the tide thinking that you know all craft breweries are going to benefit from some of the initiatives that the brewers guild is going after which is pretty cool it's such important work it It really is. is definitely is and it's also unique that you guys have because you're a smaller state one guild like we have the brewers of pa which is the organization that does a lot of the legal fights for the for the breweries in pennsylvania but we also have smaller guilds throughout the state like lancaster county has their own little brewers guild so they're working together to support the breweries in that county but then we also have the the larger overarching brewers of pa so yeah and there's so many breweries in pa i I'm sure the uh, the needs and wants for all those kind of different size breweries are just so different. Well, and it's so bizarre how the laws across states are so, so different. Well, yeah. Even states that like Delaware and Pennsylvania that border each other, it's it, it it's really bizarre. I mean, yeah. at least none of us are brewing or working in New Jersey because <laughs> <laughs> locally, I feel like their laws are. I mean, they they're fighting, and and then a lot of positive change um, has happened in the legislative level for breweries in New Jersey, but they still have a lot of work to do there too. Yeah. And, and that was one of the, uh, just, you know, briefly talking about New Jersey, that was kind of looking from Delaware across the river and seeing like, Oh wow, they really had some of their liberties taken away. Mm -hmm. Um, And really, I think that just, you know, solidifies like, this is why we need to stick together and defend craft beer interests. And that's something we just continually have to do in Delaware. Um, but I will make a little plug. One of the things that the Delaware Brewers Guild is really working on this year and putting a lot of effort into is getting um, self-distribution for small breweries legalized in Delaware. We're one of 10 states in the U.S. where that is not legal, wow. um, and it's, which seems so bizarre, right, because we're in this, like, liberal state, and but uh, it's just that's the way it's been for a long time. There just hasn't been enough um, just 
push to make a change, and we are trying to do something about that. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially like a state again, because it's not a super large state, so self distributing is a lot more practical in exactly. Delaware than other places as well. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, if you're a beer drinker, be aware of the laws in your state and speak up for the things that are best for breweries, especially your favorite breweries. I think that's that's important for yes, sure. Absolutely. Well, thanks for the work that you're doing, both for the yeah. state of Delaware and also for. Uh, producing delicious beers like the Schwartz beer. Thanks and, for uh, making a Schwartz beer. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yes, yeah. thank you for that making a Schwartz beer. Specifically a coffee Schwartz beer. <laughs> no with offense. Co- with coffee from a pizza place? Yeah, <laughs> coffee from a pizza. I was going to say. Everything about that is good to me. <laughs> no offense to Rob, who was a lot of fun and had great beers, but I think the Schwartz is my favorite so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it was my pleasure, guys. And thank you, thanks Jimmy, for having so me much. Yeah. Have a great thank day. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Well, joining us now at, again, the 14th Wine and Dinosaurs, we have Andrew from Jackal Beer Works. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, beer's good. I, I've tried some uh, awesome vermouth over at the booth next to me. I'm oh, sorry, there's yeah. vermouth here? Yes, yeah. Uh, it's Spanish vermouth. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, you guys do this segment. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, we still have about three hours till the event's over. We're probably going to have to wander around at some point. Yeah. We've just been down in our little bunker the whole time. We have no idea what's yes. going on up, uh, out there right now. I completely understand how that is. I mean, I'm by myself over there, so I'm like, you know, just trying stuff that's right next to me, but I can't go too far. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of that, we have to give uh, Rich, our other quote-unquote intern, uh, props for standing at the booth for you and pouring your beer while you're up here with yeah. us. I, I feel like he's enjoying his well. job though, because I think he's like grabbing food as he's wandering around. <laughs> well, and food and beer. I'm sure he's tasting a little bit as he drinks. You know, that's the way yeah. it goes. So. That's right. Yeah. That's how he gets paid. That's yep. for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> so I'm not familiar with with Jackal. Where's Jackal? So Jackal is uh, 128 Patriot Drive in Middletown. The exact um, address. I yep. love that. Thank you. <laughs> I rehearsed a little bit in my head at least. Um, yeah, we're uh, we're in Middletown. We're right off uh, the. Th- you know the 301 exit right before you enter maryland uh and we're uh, right next to a cornfield we have indoor outdoor seating uh pet and family friendly i should say dog and family friendly i haven't had anyone bring in a, anything other than a dog yet but i can i, I don't want I really want someone to bring in like a. I mean there is a tarantula uh, right here yeah That's right true. i mean how, <laughs> exactly how there's some, like some the exotic brewery. animals all around us <laughs> yeah. as we speak actually uh, yeah, yeah, no, we we saw like a, it was some sort of parrot on the way over here um, when we were walking here. That's um, really cool. Yeah, so yeah, um, so like I said, pet and family friendly. Uh, I say family friendly. We uh, I have uh, two small children, so I was like, we want to make sure uh, it's a place where people can bring their kids, and we have a, a small play area inside and a larger play set outside. Um, so yeah, very That's cool. It. And and how long has uh, Jackal been up and running? Uh, we started in May uh, 2021, so just over two years now. Cool. Oh, very mm-hmm. cool. Very yeah. so, so relatively young, but two years under your belt. Did the, uh, I, I, I don't know, are we mentioning the <laughs> C word? I can't think of any other questions. We weren't going to talk about COVID. We were like, we shouldn't uh, talk about COVID. And well, I was like, you know, it does play a big part in our uh, yeah. <laughs> story, I suppose. It's a story yet. Um, I feel like a story is longer. But, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we opened, you know, just after Delaware uh, started allowing, um, you know, seating with no restrictions and things like that in delaware that would happen on the it was like may may 19th or may 20th or something we opened the very next day i mean that was not by uh, the plan we, it was just like let's get open as soon as possible um and so it was a little bit of a slow start but um we're chugging along now we've we've seen a lot of growth and um we're really happy with where we're at so very cool very cool yeah. So we are we, drinking an IPA. I was going to yep. say we're starting with the IPA. For oh, which should, I love the name. You should have started with the strawberry. No, no, no. I want. I want this to be the last thing. I <laughs> okay. <said. laughs> we have our own guidelines for yeah, tasting. I don't. Water. I, sure. I am trained in tasting, and I know all that shit. But I, th- <laughs> okay. what I want to drink more, I drink second. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Sounds good. That works for me too. Okay. So we we really appreciate the name of this beer. Yeah. With regard to irregardless. Yeah. So what what inspired that? Fabulous name. Uh, I don't know. I'm a bit of a language nerd. Uh, I was hoping not, you would say that. Not, I'm not like a hardcore language nerd, but I, I like languages. I like uh, speaking properly. As I'm not like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't. I'm not like a writer or anything. But um, you know, irregardless is not a word. I'm, thank I'm you. Sorry. So, thank you. Uh, God, thank uh, you. <laughs> so yeah, that, it just was a fun name. Um, we like to 
use fun names, and uh, I, tr- I try to hit on certain series, but it doesn't always work. It doesn't matter that mm-hmm. much, you know. We're not, we're, we we love craft beer, and um, uh, I love how like in craft in craft brewing, everybody's gotten real real um, creative with the naming schemes and everything. Um, and we just try not to take it seriously. So. Yeah, I love yeah we, we appreciate funny beer names. Although I do yeah. a whole game about funny beer names on our right. normal episodes. So we, we definitely appreciate that. And I do appreciate the, the connection to language. I'm a bit of a language nerd <laughs> myself, too, so I appreciate that. It just it never ceases to amaze me the amount of people who are smart who continue to say irregardless. Yeah. I will, it's however, not however, yeah. fucking word. I will, however, <laughs> Sorry, I, sure. I get on a soapbox about this one I will, however, intervene, though, and say, and we were going on a major tangent right don't now. We'll you, don't don't, you, don't well, you dare say the language evolves. Don't you dare say that's that. That's what I was going Fuck to say. Uh, that the, it does, though. The purpose, of, the purpose of language is to communicate. And if somebody says something to you and you understand what they're saying, you, then the language has been true. effective. Does are you secretly British? If either of us is, it's him. Actually, I would probably be the secret. Okay. I mean, I will still judge people for saying it regardless, but I, I do also understand that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I mean, that's true. At the end of the day, we know what somebody uh, means when they say that, but yes, that, it's just, it's not a word. I mean, that is the true essence of language. If you understand what somebody means, right, I then mean, the, uh, yeah, the mission yeah. was accomplished. But irregardless of all of that. Boo. <laughs> This is a 9.5 percenter, if I'm Ooh, reading the notes correctly, right, and it yep. doesn't drink like one. No, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Yep. I also, I, I, was, I was saying earlier, um, like whenever hazy is introduced in the name, I feel like it's mm-hmm. like, that carries a certain connotation. Sure. And sometimes it may not be the best connotation. This beer, however, is great. I love this. It, it's like you said, it doesn't drink like it's 9.5 percent. It drinks nice and smooth. The flavor is there. The, the hot profile is there. The sweetness is there. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is great. This is Thank one you. I could easily go back to. Yeah, with uh, the beers that we produce, um, I mean, I, I say we, I brew all the beer. Um, so, like, my uh, focus on most most of our beers is balance. Uh, a lot of people use balance, and it's kind of uh, a very vague term. But the way I see balance is, like, it, it, the the general bitterness and the sweetness should balance each other yeah. in, in uh, within this, the reins of the style. Um, right. So, like, an IPA is naturally going to be a little more bitter. Um, but I like I like for it to still be a drinkable beer, you know. And I like to, uh, back in the what the aughts and the tens, like there was uh, the uh, hop wars. A lot of people <laughs> called it, where everything was just crazy bitter. Uh-huh. And, yeah. I I mean that's the, that kind of those kind of beers got me into craft beer. But I mean they're not they're not drinkable. Like, right. The general public is not drinking that in quantity. So. Um, I try to strike a, a balance between all that. Yeah, so. I think that idea of drinkability is more important now in craft mm-hmm. beer than ever before because the reality is the numbers are dropping. People yeah. are not drinking craft beer like they were before. Mm-hmm. So a super bitter, like what, 110 IBU, the crap yeah. that Stone used to release like <laughs> however many years ago. Like it's just, it. those beers are were so expensive to create right. as it is and yeah. you're not going to get the return right so as a brewer and as a business owner i think you need to think about drinkability right because you need to sell beer yeah on that note we think a lot about drinkability uh and i, I guess i kind of just said that but um we we have a jalapeno ipa on tap right now why didn't uh, you bring that <laughs> we, we we took it to a few other festivals and we just wanted to get these some exposure uh, you don't understand pepper beers is what we like got me into brewing beer. Thing. i started brewing beer because no one was making a beer spicy enough for me that's so, why i started brewing beer well that's where uh this diverges <laughs> um, <laughs> damn it it's not spicy it really in any way i mean it you it's clear that there is jalapenos in it um but it, I took all the, the pith and the seeds out, mm-hmm. so it's not spicy. Um, I love the flavor of jalapenos and yeah. peppers in general, but people aren't going to drink a spicy beer. Um, that's true. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll drink, like, a half glass of it, and then they'll be like, okay, that's too much for me. i gotta, I got to move on. Do you ever think about doing, like, a firkin or something with it to, to spice it up a little <clears> more? <throat> I, Nobody does enough firkins these days. We yeah, need to bring that. back the I, I so, saw one recently, and it reminded me the firkins were a thing. It is a goal of ours to bring on uh, some cask beers and actually have a beer engine and things like that. Mm. Um, there's only two of us doing everything behind the scenes. So oh, like, okay. we're, we're a very slow moving process uh, with everything. I mean, we just got, we got uh, a, a thing for serving beers on nitro. It's not in service yet because we just don't have, we're just kind of getting around to setting it up and, and figuring out how that works. So 
um, yeah, cask beers are, I, I love cask beers. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd love yes. to do things in Firkins and, and, and have like little offshoots of our regular beers that way. What was the thing yeah. that Dogfish used to have that you'd the run Randall? the beer? The, the Randall. Randall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bring back the Randall. Yeah, whatever Although, happened to those? I did have somebody, want, uh, Kevin Keller reminded me once that you can, instead of doing the Randall, you could just like French press it. He invited me I some mean, Facebook yeah. Yeah. at one point, like you could French press it's all these flavors much, yeah. into it. I've seen the Randall in use in a whole bunch of different uh, settings and it, it has its positives and its negatives. Uh, from a craft beer perspective, as like a, if I'm a little bit of a purist, um, like using a Randall is just like it, it really messes up the beer. Uh, I mean, you're you're oxygenating it like crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then point. the way the Randall works is like if that flavor is really strong up front, or sometimes depending on what it is, it's not strong yet, and then it like dissolves in, in the beer that's already in there. Um, so it's it's just a I don't know. But it's, I, it's, it's a great a concept. Gimmick, really. It's a more yeah. of a gimmick. Yeah. yeah, it's a great concept. I love the thought of it. And I mean, Dogfish Head is, of course, uh, legendary in the industry and, and has pioneered a lot of stuff like that. But, um, you know, not everything always works. So. I'm just trying to think of how to make your jalapeno beer spicy for me. That's what that's. <laughs> I have you can a just garnish it. With I mean, line. yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be that hard to garnish it with just like <laughs> like a couple that's slivers actually, of uh, jalapeno. You are 100 percent right, yeah. because if, as long as you leave that membrane and the seeds in there, it definitely will impart some. Speak, yeah. yeah some and the alcohol will pull that right out. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do kind of feel like having this conversation. We're talking about like weird firkins and Randalls and like crazy spicy beers, and like striking for balance. And it does kind of feel like, and maybe it's just our perspective, you know, doing the podcast that the, the craft beer industry has kind of matured, sort mm-hmm. of beyond that like stunty stuff you used to see a lot more. Even with hazy, I mean, I know it still happens, <laughs> and like and they're just putting it in cans uh, now instead the haze of craze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And maybe I'm just not seeing it as much as I used to. I think you're forgetting about the beers that people are putting in slushy machines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do forget that there's a whole slushy that's, thing, too. That's a little stunty, in my opinion. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it sells, and, and for uh, certain businesses to do whatever sells their beer, that's that's their, yeah. Yeah. you know. Well, if it's a slushy beer, it, so. maybe, maybe this is just me, and, like, some restaurants I've gone to recently have, like, the things that you can take the pictures of, and it's all Instagrammable. Do you think the slushy beer is just because people want to post a picture of it on Instagram or somewhere? They're like, Oh my god, it's a beer, but it's a slushy. It's a <laughs> well, that's, that's a fa- that's a fair assessment. I mean, uh, so much in our society today is, is about like what what's picturesque and yeah. Instagrammable, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and rather totally look right, what yeah. I'm doing rather. But than if it's getting people to, to your exactly. brewery, yeah. But also, yeah, that's and true. That's, and that's what I what I was trying to say before is like, yeah, I personally I don't like it. We won't be doing it at Jackal. Um, I won't say never, but we don't do it now, and I don't foresee us doing it. But. Um, yeah, if people are drinking it, uh, I mean that. In the end, that's what I think about with the beers that we that we produce. Is like, are people going to drink it? Are people going to enjoy it? I mean, what, no matter what I think of it, I mean, as long as people are drinking it, enjoying it, that's the real. Uh, that's what matters. Game. Yeah, 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 I, I would I, obviously, yeah, like the, the the gimmicky stuff is good for the gimmick, but you need to have something that backs it up. And I'm glad to hear you say that you're focused on the drinkability, the flavor. You want the product to be as best as it can for somebody to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. That's a lot to be said. And uh, not to jump the gun a little bit too much, but uh, I had a, a sip of this next beer, the <laughs> Strawberry Bitch Bomber. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is fantastic. And Thank you. with strawberries on it, so strawberries for me is another one that kind of like hazy might impart some kind of connotation to it, mm-hmm. uh, but it's nice and subtle in this. Yeah. yeah. I love it. And I love strawberries. So mm-hmm. like I can do an overpowering strawberry, but I really appreciate that this is not that. I love that this is subtle. It's clean. It's delicious. It's yeah. Oh, this is great. You can still taste the blonde ale. Like yes. the strawberry yeah. yes. is definitely there, but yeah. it does not overshadow the beer. Yeah. So it's everything that you were just talking about. Yes. This is clear evidence of your beliefs and that balance and drinkability. Yeah, I was going to say what, what I when it comes to like fruiting beers and spicing beers, um, I always want it to be beer first. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I mean, everything. There's a lot of other things that you can make something at, uh, in like alcoholic or whatever. Uh, but f- for me, beer is beer, and uh, I mean, I love adding different flavors to it. But it should always taste like beer, um, yeah. just with that addition, you know. Yeah, I um, like that you you get the, the the strawberry flavor, but not the like overpowering sweetness. And like you're saying, like you still get the blonde ale underneath. Yeah. So in, in this beer, I I didn't just use uh, strawberry puree because uh, I feel like strawberry puree is um, it's great. I, I mean, I love strawberries myself. Uh, actually, I came up with this idea. I was eating a, a bowl of. Um, 
Greek vanilla yogurt uh, with with some fresh strawberries. Oh, I was cut hoping you it. were going to say strawberries and cream instant oatmeal. That's <laughs> so, what I immediately <laughs> thought of when I saw this beer. It took me back to like being well, six years old. <laughs> well, I mean, when making this, you might think that's what it is because mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of oats in it. Um, but but yeah, so that was my inspiration for it. Uh, was that you know a bowl of uh, strawberries and yogurt. Um, and where was I going with this? Oh, right. sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I totally derailed, derailed oh, the train of thought. Oh, oh uh, so strawberries are uh, are great, but they're it's just strawberry. I mean, there's like one note, and I I like complexity in beer, even mm-hmm. if it's subtle. Um, so I added we have I have these French hops, pair of French hops that uh, uh, put up a lot of berry and especially strawberry notes. Um, and I dry hopped it with that to kind of um, back up that strawberry note to add a little complexity i almost get a little bit of citrus and i think i'm just crazy it could be yeah Yeah. it's really good though i really like this there's a lot going on in here i love it Mm. well so if people want to learn more about jackal Mm -hmm. which if you're not looking at your phone is spelled (laughs) j-a-k-l yes uh where can they find you on the internet uh so so channel uh we're at uh, at jackal beer uh on uh facebook and instagram uh www.jackalbeerworks.com um, most of the information is on Facebook. Uh, I try to keep our website up to date. That's my job as well. So um, that sometimes that falls by the wayside. <laughs> yeah, usually when the person um, brewing the beer is also doing the social media, the brewing the beer is what takes priority. Yeah, yes, I, try to, I try to. I have, like, you know, reminders on my phone and yeah. stuff like that. But, yeah. you know, uh, certain things have to take precedence. Um, so, yeah, uh, check us out. Um, you know, we have events all the time. Uh, we, have, we have a... A fundraiser coming up for uh, the Delaware Veterans Home on this Wednesday. Oh, nice. Um, so I will share um, that on our social media. Yeah, thank you. Very cool. Very cool. And I do want to say uh, before we let you go, I really dig the logo. Yeah, like the, yeah, the I do font too. And the design on the sticker and on your shirt there—it's really cool. Yeah, we just kind of happened into that. Um, I'm, I came up with the name Jackal. It's my uh, my initials coupled with my partner's initials. A little anagram together. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so I'm cool. Andrew Culp. Uh, my partner is Justin Lavolo, and um, and uh, he and I went to high school together, so that's how we got together. Oh, cool. But um, I just obviously the, the name sounds cool that way, and it lends uh-huh. itself to that kind of mascot. Um, and I came up with like I, I started with the concept of like the Anubis, you know, like the jackal headed god of the Egyptian god. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had an artist kind of run with that, and this is what we came up with. How many combinations of your initials did you go through? Did you go through like Black G- Kajal? I mean, it's only, f- I mean, in, well, yeah. You only got aside, one vowel. <laughs> yeah, I was say, aside from our, uh, you know, middle names, it's only four letters, so you can't go through too much, right? So. Uh, sir, obviously, there was there were combinations that just didn't do anything. Yeah, so. no, jackal jackal <laughs> yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. I'm Very I'm cool. running them all through my head right now. Right, of course, yeah. of course. There's, there's nothing yeah. else. For, and I don't know why they came up. With <laughs> clodge. The best one. I did. I think I got what Clodge was. I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, there's some weird clodge. named breweries out there, but Clodge. No. <laughs> yeah, that does, that just sounds kind of gross. Yeah, I don't know yeah. Why, yeah, but it does. it's it's so not so even gross. a word. Do you have the latest beer from Clodge? No thing. Uh, a little, a little a pretentious choice. sounding too. I, I like the uh, the logo. It has like I don't know. It feels like it's got like a mix of Pennsylvania Dutch and heavy metal. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, yes. oh, like oh, oh, oh my community. god. That's yes. Interesting that you say that because uh, uh, the guy that made it actually I think he was Armenian or something. We put it up on Fiverr and you know oh, you, yeah. you get yeah, like yeah. Uh, like bids or something on it. Um, and yeah, it was this guy from uh, Eastern Europe that that did it. Um, I have no idea what his name is, uh, but he did a fantastic job. Um, but yeah, so there's there's a, there's definitely a Germanic uh, touch mm-hmm. to it, or mm-hmm. or uh, Russian maybe even. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I I grew up in in the. Uh, Pennsylvania Dutch area. My wife laughs at me because oh. oh, no. when, when I say, uh, "Oh yeah, I love pierogies," you know, pierogies uh, are great. Yeah, uh, so you know, I mean, we're we're all from the Reading area, so you're you're talking oh, okay. to you're talking to Pennsylvania Dutch territory. Yeah, here. no, uh, mm-hmm. my my partner, and I grew up in Nazareth, so okay, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. very cool, very I cool. Didn't expect to hear Pennsylvania Dutch mentioned today. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I really like the I, I mean, like the we're vibe. Not, of, we're not that far from Lancaster. True, so it's true, it's very true. Yeah, it's true. Well, thank you, awesome. Andrew. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Up. Nice to meet you. Great yeah. beers. Yeah, awesome. appreciate Cheers. it. Cool. Cheers. Cheers. Continuing the fun here at Wine and Dinosaurs, we have joining us from Wilmington Brew Works, we have Derek. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Oh, fantastic as well. Thank you for joining and ladies, us. ladies, my bad. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> pleasure. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, now, we a couple of years ago, we recorded here the last time they did it in 2019. Obviously, okay. there were things that happened uh, between, <laughs> between then, then and, now. and now. Yeah, a lot of uh, things have happened bit. in the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and we did have someone from Wilmington Brew Works on. It was Wayne. You looked it up. It was Keith. Keith right? Hughes. Keith. Yes. Yeah, we Keith on. Last time. So yep. very excited to welcome back to the show Wilmington Brew Works, but to also meet you. Well, this is so you. exciting. And I also I, I said it before we officially started recording. I love that you are wearing a Wilmington Brew Works uh, hockey jersey. I love it. Thank you very much. It's one of my favorites. It's so I get cool. a lot of good feedback on this. Uh, wear it out as much as I can, trying to represent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, it's in the classic uh, old school Buffalo Sabres colors, oh. which happens to be the state of Delaware. All right, so okay. the blue and gold. All right, oh, I didn't, I didn't put yeah. that together. I like that. Yeah. A lot of this is going over my head. I'm no. not a sports guy, but it's a very cool <laughs> shirt. Thank there you. was years, <laughs> years ago. I worked with somebody who like was amateur hockey player his entire life. Like mm-hmm. he, he did something with Flyers youth at one point, and Bernie Perrant was their coach. Uh, and like I've met Bernie Perron a few times, awesome guy. Eh, is some you know a little off mark comics here and there, but overall great From guy. A hockey player, don't I know, that. right? <laughs> uh, I've every- held his Stanley Cup ring. I served oh, him that's coffee cool. twice. Yes. Oh, wow. you did. That's right. Yeah. I worked at a hospital cafe. Um, he came in. My uh, my friend that I used to work with, he so. Because of this, every time I said hockey jersey, he was like, you have to call it a sweater. I learned that from Bernie they Perron. Are every time, sweaters. Every time we said jersey, yeah, he'd true. say, no, we're in Pennsylvania. What are you wearing? It's like, oh, okay, well, it's a hockey sweater. Gotcha. So every time I say jersey, I'm like, I need to say sweater. I have you to say sweater. You hear Bernie Perron yelling at you. Yeah, exactly. Bernie Perron, I don't imagine yelling, though. No, but like his his judginess, though, probably felt well, like yelling. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> Possibly, <laughs> but if you like the, if you like the sweater, they are available. We do sell them. We do pre sales for them every year nice. uh, in the fall, and uh, you can get them customized with your name and number on the back. Oh, that's cool. cool. So let me show you the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What do we yeah. got we gotta take a look at the back. You got a lot of cords attached to you. Oh, oh beer hunter. hunter. Oh, nice, wow. nice. Very nice. cool. Very cool. That's so cool. And the thirty three is uh, Patrick Roy, my favorite goalie. Oh, well, there I you mean, go. He is. I will never play for this team again. I mean, he is one of the best goaltenders of all time. Even if he was super dramatic, but isn't he coaching now? Is he coaching? He is. I'm not sure who he's coaching for, yeah. but I know he was. Yeah, we know he's not playing for the Canadians anymore. <laughs> no, no, that we know. Gary yeah. Price was in that for a little while. <laughs> yes, doing a heck of a job. Yes. Well, beer. about beer, yes. <laughs> have, we, beer. Wait, have, we, have we broken our, 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 are we going to traditional tasting order now? I know, I poured the Pilsner. I was going to say, this oh is a Pilsner, my right? God. Actually, start with the Pilsner first, because it's a lighter beer. Okay? Um, it's very crisp and refreshing, refreshing, and you're going to follow it up with the IPA. So, one thing I will suggest is anytime you're at a beer festival or tasting beers critically, you always want to take, well, I say that you always want to take at least two sips. The first sip is going to kind of neutralize and condition your palate from what you tried previously. Or even if you just had water, it's going to kind of set the stage. The second sip doesn't have to compete with anything. So you're going to get the full flavor profile of the beer. So if you've only taken one sip, take another sip. The second sip is always going to be better than the first. It's like rinsing your palate. I love that. (laughs) Well, and I think every subsequent sip of a Pilsner is always better than the one before, to be honest. This one's particularly good. Until it's the last one. Right. And it's just sad. sad. So interesting note on the last one. So our lagers, lagers in general, as they warm up, they become um, more smoother because they have a chance to open up and you're going to get different VOCs and things that come off of them as Mm -hmm. the temperature increases. The last sip of your lager is typically going to be better than your first. It means have another. Yes, that means have another. And you get to go through that experience again. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I ever have a lager in a glass long enough for it to warm up. (laughs) Not like warm. Well, not warm, but warmer. It doesn't reach thermal equilibrium. but Thermal equilibrium. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh, are we going to roll like he that? Had to, he had to balance out irregardless. Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about irregardless earlier. So Using Matt's, the not word. I got to talk smart now. Yeah. This is really good. Yeah. I love the biscuity, crackery malt I'm character so in it. I'm so glad you said yes. biscuit because yes. that's one of the flavor profiles mm-hmm. of it. So a lot of people don't realize, or maybe they do, but they've never made the connection that beers are made from grain and yeah. grain will have different characteristics. I always give the example or try and walk people down the road of, you know, have you ever tried just dipping your, your finger in, wetting your finger and trying just raw flour and that mm-hmm. has a certain flavor profile. But when you add water to it, it changes the flavor of the flour to dough. And then you can make biscuits or crackers or um, pretzels. even bread pretzels. Yes, that's a really good <laughs> one too because there are certain beers that have a flavor profile of like a pretzel crust. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. right? mm-hmm. there's a big difference between the pretzel crust and the inside of mm-hmm. the pretzel. Even though it's the same grain, 
you're um, caramelizing the sugars mm -hmm. in the crust. And yep. you can actually taste those different characteristics in beers. But this beer in particular, the Synonym, 4% ABV, delicious beer. It's amazing how much flavor is, it's, is in such a light beer. Yeah. But it does have the biscuit profile. Yeah, you it. really, yeah, you get the malt. You get the, like the, the Pilsner hoppiness that mm -hmm. kind of like cleans it up yep. a little bit. Saws, the hops in there yeah. too. Yeah, really nice. I like that you mentioned um, pretzel crust mm -hmm. because I wanted to mention pulchritude. <laughs> oh, subtle pulchritude. <laughs> because I know, oh, yeah, we had yes. that last time. That's the one I was referring to with yes. the pretzel crust. <laughs> yes, exactly. As soon as you said pretzel crust, I was like, well, we're getting there. Because I don't remember, we had a whole conversation about pulchritude. It's such a good beer. Mm -hmm. What does pulchritude mean? I don't remember. Subtle pulchritude uh, is, pulchritude means beauty. Okay. So okay. the name of the beer is technically subtle beauty right but subtle pulchritude and then we have the big brother of subtle pulchritude which is the pulchrinator oh of course oh, got a nader gotta yeah. have a nader oh, okay yeah so it's our doppelbach oh. yes uh, so are you familiar with the backstory on doppelbox mm -hmm. and how the, okay it's liquid bread for the yeah. monks yep. they had to fast so they made a high abv beer mm -hmm. god bless them <laughs> yes yes i mean doppelbachs are one of the best beer styles oh, out there yeah. you know what I love Doppelbox. My heart lives with the big bourbon barrel aged beers. Now we're talking. And I would love to find a barrel aged Doppelbach. Oh, they're actually, out if, there. if you're listening, don't don't do that because we want to do it first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we no, had I never a, said that. Icebox. We've done Icebox, which is yep. like mm. kind of yep. getting you in that direction. Yeah. But mm. uh, I don't think I've had a barrel aged. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've had barrel aged Doppelbox. Yeah, Doppelbox. Yeah. Really? Yes. We'll talk yes. later. The Trogue Box, Doppelbox. Do. Yeah, Trogue. Uh, Trog oh, Troganator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do a barrel aged. Uh, That's right. We still have bottles of it at oh, home. Oh, I, I think, think I, too. I still have one too. I should probably save one. What year? <laughs> I mean, my, mine, mine's probably 2019. Oh, now you're just talking dirty to me. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. So, Derek's going to come hang out afterwards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy how I got into the whole brewery thing. Um, I moved to Delaware in 2013, met a, a guy that I uh, worked with. He was a home brewer, and he's one of the partners now at the brewery. His name is Dan Yacht, beer man. And uh, he introduced me to these bourbon barrel-aged beers. And I had no idea that beers, you could have beers that were like this. But he also taught me that certain beers you can age like wine. Mm -hmm. And think of it this way. The day you make chili, it's good, right? Mm -hmm. But two days later, yep. it's even better because mm -hmm. it has a chance to marinate. Yep. So he taught me that you can age these certain barrel, bourbon barrel aged beers and high ABV beers. And I went on a tear. I <laughs> had like <laughs> four to 500 bottles of beer in my collection just aging. That's awesome. And yeah, that was basically my resume my resume <laughs> for the brewery. <laughs> nice. Well, nice. then it, it's finding the sweet spot. It's finding that right. spot where it's aged enough, but it hasn't oxidized yet, yep. and it's smoothed out, mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, because a lot of the beers I like, uh, obviously, uh, malty backbones, mm -hmm. but if you let sweet beers age too long, they're going to tend to dry out, like yeah. barley wines and quads and things of that nature. Not a barrel-aged uh, Doppelbach, but next we have a West Coast IPA. Yeah, this is called Distracted Thoughts. Um, this is a West Coast IPA. That should be We're the name of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really should. <laughs> oh, squirrel, what? Um, exactly. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so this is a great IPA. I'm not an IPA guy, but... Well, you're in Craig good company. Our, yeah, our, <laughs> Craig, our head brewer and, and president, he just puts it down when it comes to IPAs, whether they're West Coast or Northeast. This one ha in particular has a very nice malty backbone to it. You can taste a lot of the sweetness on it, and it's not overly hopped. It has what uh, we characterize as a moderate level of bitterness, mm -hmm. and it uses Centennial hops, too. We actually dry hop it with Centennial to add a little extra something-something. But the balance and smoothness of this, it's nice because it starts out almost lager ish with the malty backbone and then it transitions to uh, some nice hop hop bitterness but a very light amount yeah i love a west coast ipa yeah back in the day like 12 15 years ago <laughs> when i first started drinking ipas it was, you wanted an ipa it was a west coast ipa yep. so that spiciness and that that like sharpness, the sharpness. that the bitterness has mm -hmm. and and that nice malt backbone that holds it all together like these are the ipas that i want to drink so yeah, the, 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 that that malt backbone, which isn't so, something you hear people right, talk about right, much anymore. IPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it's really present here. And this is, and it's going to sound bad, but this is like going back to like the chewing on a cigar 
style of IPA, which I feel like hasn't been around much. Mm -hmm. There is something time. else in here that I'm getting that I can't put my so finger on. So I'm actually on. getting a teeny bit of like bubble Me gum. I see. I, I think it's like melon that I'm yeah, getting. Yeah, it's probably the, really? the centennial hops. Yeah, it's like yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, fruity. Yeah. I don't even want to say It does have some floral sweet, citrusy yeah. notes to it. Yeah, it's it's like a bright, like sweet but not sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Sometimes my palate perceives that 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 hop fruitiness as like juicy fruit bubble gum a little bit yeah, when it's in a very malty IPA, which I love. Oh yeah, it's it's delicious. This, this is great. Thank yeah, you. we've been saying a lot of really nice things about IPAs today. I know, which and isn't we're really normally IPA what we do. We're, we're like well, lager people. Sweep it under the carpet kind of deal. Not all IPAs are created equal. And that's right. one of the things yeah. that I've learned. Uh, the first IPA that I've ever been excited to take home and drink was Lupulin Enlightenment, which was one of our flagship uh, beers that we made uh, back in the day. It had lactose in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I crushed so much of that. <laughs> yeah, those those crowlers and growlers just didn't do it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Moss, more moss. <laughs> So you already mentioned about the website. So going to the website is a great suggestion. Scrolling down, put your email in at the bottom of the, the web page. I don't know if we actually had that recorded or not, but that was great advice that do. Derek gave us. But if people want to find Wilmington uh, Brew Works mm -hmm. on the social medias, what is the, the handle for you guys? Um, Wilmington Brew Works, uh, com, uh, Wilmington Brew Works on, uh, on Facebook. I uh, believe the same on Instagram. Sorry, John. John is the director <laughs> of social media and marketing Fair, and our yeah. brand manager. And I am not on social media as much as I should well, be. Well, if you go to WilmingtonBrewWorks.com, yeah, ab everything has, has I'm sure everything, is tagged there. Everything there. And on Facebook, too. One sorry, stop sorry shop. not to find us. Yeah. Fair You'll be cool. able to see all of our events and the different things we have going on in the tap room. Um, you'll be able to see what beers we have on tap as well, um, beers that are coming up, our merchandise. I want to. I want to try this. I'm really excited <laughs> about. That. I wrote down Polkernator because I really want. Yeah, I gotta. Oh, I just yeah. love the name too, Polkernator. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> it's perfect. I love it. Well, I thank you it. so for much for sitting down with us and chatting. And, My absolute uh, pleasure. Yeah, thank and you bringing for having these me. tasty yeah, beers. I'm going to say I actually really, really like this West Coast IPA. Yeah, wow. I know. Shh, I know. We're, we're, finding, we're finding our love for IPA today. <laughs> well, you know what? Swing on by the tap room after this if you have a chance. It's, it's a really good time. Awesome. Um, I bet. I bet. And How far is it from here? It's about 15 minutes from here. We oh. are off of uh, exit 8 off of 95, so you want to take 202 South not mm -hmm. north, like you're heading back towards the city. And at the set of lights you come to, there's a Fulton paper on the left-hand side. You want to take that left up uh, North Broom. It'll cross Baynard and turn into uh, Miller Road. And we're on the left-hand side. Yeah, she's from Delaware, so she understood everything you said. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're literally four minutes off the highway. Awesome. That's awesome. Amazing. Yeah, we're a little oasis up there. That's very awesome. cool. Very cool. Well, thanks so much. And uh, yeah. thank you especially for the very cool hockey sweater. Thank that you, you for saying <laughs> sweater. <laughs> <laughs> You're so you, welcome. Derek. Thank you. Yeah, thanks cheers. for having cool. me. Cheers. cheers. The fun continues, as it always does here at Wine and Dinosaurs, but we have joining us from Midnight Oil. We have Bill. Bill, how are you, sir? Very good. How are you guys doing today? Fantastic. Thank you Great. so much for joining us. Absolutely. I love Midnight Oil. You know how we were just talking about how, you know, these breweries that we've been part of their progression? Yeah. Like, mid the first time Midnight Oil was here and we recorded with them, they weren't even technically open yet. Oh, that's right. right. So we have known them since, like... Before. Before. Ooh. And then to, like, go to their facility and see them in all their glory. And then, you know, I, when you guys were here in 2019, did you have someone from there? We did. We had, I well? believe, TJ. TJ. Yeah. Aha. Yes. TJ is yeah. one of our, one of our uh, original, well, one of our owners. Cool. So, yeah. so it's really cool to have been part of their evolution throughout the time. Yeah. Oh, we have a costume change. Oh, Dino it's another change. Triceratops uh, costume. Uh, we, we interrupt your regularly scheduled podcast to bring you a live report <laughs> of a new dinosaur costume change. <laughs> <laughs> dinosaur is now eating the microphone. We had a green sight Triceratops. Now we have a, an RNG yes. Triceratops. I'm doing the play-by-play -play because nobody listening to this can see what's happening. This is the best part of this fest. Oh, that was that was Beer incredible. Beer is a very, very close second, but the, the, <laughs> di the dinosaur, the dinosaur costume. costume changes is just like, you don't even understand. Oh, That's the okay, best. Sorry. So Bill's here. Yep. Right. Yep. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still here. We're good. We're good. Not uh, in a dinosaur costume. So what's what's new in the world of Midnight Oil? Well, it's funny. You should mention being there. I'm sure you guys haven't been there lately. We have to totally revamp oh. of the tasting room, our beers, things like that. Um, one of our things now, our new motto now is... We've learned a lot and changed more. Wow. Oh, okay. So oh. We're going for a whole new 
everything. Uh, like I said, the tasting room has been totally redesigned. We're in like a 90s retro kind of thing now. Oh, oh okay, uh, cool. We have VHS tapes on one wall. We have, you know, throwback posters, movie posters, music, po- things like that. So uh, we've really learned a lot of what this industry is, what it isn't, and what we can do to make that our thing. So a new logo. Uh, next year, we're, we're introducing four new core brands. Uh, this year we had uh, three IPAs, uh, a Kolsch, um, and um, a Pale. So uh, next year we're going to kind of pull back a little on the IPAs. We're going to have two IPAs, another Pale, um, and a Lager, which is kind of new for us. Lager, I'm sure you guys know, will take a little longer, so yeah. but it's something we want to kind of go to. Um, so that's our, our plan, and, and um, we're going to that, that side of it now. So. Very cool. I noticed the, uh, your T-shirt and the can seems to be a, a refresh of the logo with the MOBC. Yes. So that, that's that's whole part of the redesign. Nope. That's going to be a whole different one. Now. Oh, okay. That's oh, going to change wow. as well. Okay. Okay. Kinda, it's going to be it's going to be an MOBC and has a lightning bolt in the middle. Oh, okay. cool. Um, uh, kind of another kind of like throwback to the '90s kind of thing. I'm kind of um, curious what like throwback movie and whatever posters you have up. I, I, I name I'm, them all right now. I am <laughs> I am forever '90s nostalgia, gonna, so I'm just like I'm just curious. That's, well, uh, we go back a little more for too because a lot of us we have we're, we're huge Jaws fans. Okay, so one okay. of the first things we did was put a Jaws poster up. Of course, and a couple of them, we had like no that no swimming sign that was in yep. the sun, things like that. Uh, we actually are changing them quarterly kind of thing. Oh, that's oh, cool. That's so neat. yeah. Um, and then we have um, uh, we have the Shawshank Redemption. If you remember the on the on the roof drinking the beers. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. We had that picture in mm-hmm. there. Um, kind of that kind of stuff. We do. We were doing movie nights on Mondays. I think we're gonna kind of redirect that to something else. But yeah. we're kind of doing that uh, and doing retro '90s movies, things like that. Shawshank uh, turned 29 this week. I oh, saw really? a post about that. Oh, yeah, it's its 29th anniversary. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we're all kind of movie geeks. Uh, besides being beer geeks. Right. right, right so yeah. it's like it kind of made natural sense for us to kind of go to that thing. I mean, arguably, the two go hand in hand. Absolutely. Perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're going to see new, like, our names are going to go less celestial now. Okay. Um, and the, the labels and, and the design is going to be totally different than what we did. Like I said, we're doing a total revamp. That's awesome. It's just something we felt. It's, now it's time. Uh, we have, an, like I said, we have an identity now. I don't think we really had one for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. So... Um, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. We're we're, we're looking forward to it. Very that's cool. Exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to see what what yeah, happens yeah. with all that. Yes, yeah. that's, that's so Absolutely. cool. So, which of these two beers should we drink first? <laughs> uh, well, we have our double IPA, Orion, nine um, percent. So totally, we should drink so that first, that right? Course, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, we've just been we've been we've been we have thrown uh, style guidelines and and proper ordering out the door. Today. <laughs> yeah, we're Absolutely. really loosey goosey today, <laughs> and like we all we all really like IPAs today, which is not normal for yeah, us. Yeah, usually <laughs> we don't. We are lager drinkers, but um, Delaware breweries make some pretty tasty IPAs. Yeah, we've really been jamming on the IPAs today. I'm trying to post this video of the Triceratops, and it's cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, very cool. So tell us about Orion. Uh, Orion, is, like I said, is our double IPA. Uh, it's been around about a year or so. Um, we try to stay away from the higher ones. When we started, if you guys remember, we started, we were, like, everything was seven and up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're like, look, we got to pull these back. We want people to come in and have a few beers, not one, and you can barely get them out the door. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we kind of, the last few years, we've kind of tried to pull them back. And uh, it was funny, me and one of the owners, I think we looked up at our menu board and like, Everything's under seven now. What happened? <laughs> it was above seven. The other um, way. But we, like I said, we have Orion, which is our double, nine uh, percent. Um, we'll we'll fool around with some we'll triples every once in a while, things like that. Uh, but in general, I think we want to kind of. I, I jokingly say I want beer that tastes like beer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. sometimes we've gotten away from that. It's great to have them. Don't get me wrong. Sours are a great thing, and things like that. The fruited beers are great. Um, but I think the, the industry is changing that way too. Yeah, we um, used to joke around a lot about like beer flavored beer is yeah. like the the thing, but like now that's that's how the business is. It's getting yeah. back to beer flavored beer, which is the way it should be. Absolutely, it's I, cool I, to have the adjuncts and the different flavors here and there, but you, yeah. you should have good beer flavored beer. Yeah, I mean we we've gone over to we're doing more pale ales now. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I said, we're going to start delving into lagers a little more. We'll start with the IPAs; they sell. That's what sells, and right. you know, that's still part of what we have to do in, in our portfolio. You got to have you know a hazy. You got to have this. Of course, um, but yeah, I think we're going towards that. But uh, Orion's been a good one to us. I think it drinks. It doesn't drink like a high ABV beer, no. which is very dangerous. <laughs> yes, yeah. um, we've had a lot of those today. Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, I think that's what makes it enjoyable to most people is that it doesn't. You guys thought, well, that's nine percent. 
you know, we do limit it in the, in the tasting room. We do, I think, two 10-ounce pours. Yeah. Uh, just because, you know, you have to. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, yeah, that's the... That's what Orion is to us. It's just it's what we think that kind of style should be. So will this beer still be named Orion, or are you looking to take existing recipes and rename them to fit with the new branding? No, I think most of these uh, will be – these will actually probably become what we call occasionals because mm-hmm. we kind of split them up to our cores, occasionals, and seasonals. Mm-hmm. Uh, occasionals are ones we'll bring back every once in a while because people demand it or people love them, things like that. Yeah. So probably like once a year or something we'll bring those kind of mm-hmm. things. Um, like I said, the four cores will be um, the two IPAs, a pale and a lager. And our, our uh, the other beer I brought here, your mom, <laughs> which is a raspberry blonde with uh, vanilla and lactose, that's more of a seasonal beer for us. It's a Mother's Day beer that the owner and his mom brewed three or four years ago. Oh, oh that's cool. nice. Yes, it was great. And it's based on the, if you're familiar with the Edamons Raspberry Danish. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. That's okay. exactly where we got the idea from. Oh. Okay, oh. well, now that I know that his, I was a little <laughs> worried about the beer name at first because you hear it and you're like, you automatically think as like that comeback to someone yeah, like yeah, telling absolutely. a mean joke. Absolutely. And I was like, okay, well, his mom was part of brewing this beer. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so it's, it, okay. it's a loving name, not a... It, it actually is. It, it very <laughs> much is. Um, it was something that we did. It did start a seasonal. We kind of made it a semi-core for a while. But then we realized people were, like, getting too used to it. And so it wasn't like, all right, we're going to pull it back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so Make them look forward to it. Exactly. And that's, and that's one of the things, like I said, we're learning. We learned. Mm-hmm. There are certain beers that people will drink all year round. And there's certain beers like, I want certain. You know, I'm not one of those. I'll drink anything any time <laughs> of year. Um, but, yeah, they, we, we kind of decided that, you know, there's certain beers that we just need to hold back for certain times of year. Yeah. Like we do our porter. We do that in, you know, March for St. Patrick's Day. Um, so, yeah, but this is a... Uh, I'm okay with a dark beer on all year, though. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So am I. Yeah. I absolutely. Well, my Especially if it's a Schwartz beer. Have. Yeah, I was going to say, we were pulling for a year-round Schwartz beer earlier today. <laughs> I don't think we convinced him, though. <laughs> Probably not. <clears throat> all right, let's crack this one open. Okay. Oh, I should have held it up. I know you should have oh, man, the sound effect. Mm-hmm. That, Given how you said it was modeled after, like, a raspberry Danish. Yes. I, I don't know that I expected it to pour as nice and bright as yes. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. It does have a nice color. Nice, to it. Does, yeah. fluffy, pillowy head. Ooh, ooh, nice aroma. The raspberry comes through like right away. It does. Oh my god, I love oh, this. That's oh nice. my god. I also love that this is only five percent. Yeah, mm. <laughs> it's nice, drinkable, easy. You know. Oh, you know, I mentioned wow. earlier beer flavor beer, but this is – I'm okay with this. Right. This, the, this the occasional adjunct, the occasional, absolutely. you know, cr- uh, crazy flavor beer, uh, this this is great. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's very jammy. That's another word <laughs> of the day. Yeah, exactly. Word of the day is jammy. We, we, I like fruit beers if they're jammy. If they're jammy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were pointing at his computer. I was like, <laughs> what am I too? I'm like, what? Did it What's stop? wrong with the iPad? What's going on? I don't know. I was trying to communicate without having to cause an editing point, and it apparently <laughs> Who edits? <laughs> <laughs> it's Who going edits? out live. <laughs> Who edits? Yeah. It's going to hit upload right after we're done. <laughs> As live, yes. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. That would be- I would love to not have to give up my lunch breaks to edit. Yeah. yeah right. It would make your job way easier. It certainly would. <laughs> God, I really like this. I, oh, yeah. this is so good. It's one of the ones we're very proud of. Yeah, it's I really. See why. It, it came out exactly the way we dreamed it. I mean, yeah, brewing beers, not easy. It's there's right. science to it, and mm-hmm. ideas are great. We have great ideas, but do they actually? We've had beers that have, trust me, have not come out the way we hoped or wish they would. But this one yeah. came out really well. Well, there's a lot of strength in recognizing that something didn't turn out the way you like it. I mean, yeah. it's if it doesn't work or God forbid it gets infected or something, like you have to, you have to, you have to own that. You have to learn from the mistake that that was, and then find something that works and you can be proud of like this this is oh god this is fantastic yeah absolutely i mean we've had mistake beers we've been lucky some of them we've been able to to put out mm-hmm. yeah we had an ipa it was supposed to be an ipa it turned into a belgian strong whoa <laughs> so did really yeah. well for us but the problem is you can't re- redo that, it. i was gonna yeah, say if it's like a happy it. accident yeah. yeah that beer had another plan for itself exactly <laughs> yeah, that beer had its own plan yeah, we were proud of that beer. This, this beer is great like, great we can never make it again yep. yeah. yeah but it's, it's never gonna beer. happen again yeah yeah I always come back to Sochi. Sochi Goodell. Sochi Goodell. That's Schitt's, what uh, Schitt's Creek. Snitz, Snitz. Creek. <laughs> <laughs> One of those very early podcast episodes. Yeah, they it had was a happy accident. The yeast died somewhere along the way, yeah. and they just like it turned and into it turned a good out beer. Really good. But it was like, a really we can't do this. Beer. This is yeah. this is it. Drink it while you can. 
Uh, that's exactly what happened with that one. Yeah. yeah. That's always our touchstone whenever we hear about yeah, happy accidents. pretty much. We always come back to that. But uh, Now but I want a mac and cheese grilled cheese. Whoa. Yeah, that, yeah. Remember they had those there? Those no, I just remember the bologna sandwich. Does Midnight Oil have food? Uh, right now we have any food trucks. Food trucks. Okay. Yes. Um, interspersed things like that. We're, we're thinking about other things right now, but we're not sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do food trucks usually Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, and then during the week, we have a couple events. Uh, we have trivia on Tuesdays and video music bingo on Thursday. There's food trucks for that, for those cool. types of things. And then we have events throughout the year. Like we have a big event every once a month, mm-hmm. things cool. like that. Um, but yeah, normally it's just food trucks. But as long as there's food. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Sorry, I cut you off. I don't know if you remember what you were going to talk no, about. No, I was just going to say, we were talking about how, uh, you know, like having, you know, being honest when a beer doesn't turn out the way yeah. you want, you know, whether you're going to pivot or whether you're going to, it's going to be a drain oh, yeah. pour. Um, but I think that t- sort of ties in with the whole rebranding thing you're talking about as a brewery, like being willing to reinvent yourself. Yeah, and yeah. Just absolutely. Just kind of do what you need absolutely. to do to, to, to make the product you want to yeah, make. Yeah, we're so. in our sixth year right now. So yeah. it's like, you know, this is the time to... We've tried other things, and let's try something completely different. Yeah. I think we've always tried to stay in the same lane kind of with our branding and everything like that. But now it's like, you know what? We're going to go almost 360 degree yeah. in a different way and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And like so far, it's been great. Uh, we've kind of done it over the past few months slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we're getting a lot more traction, I think. I think we're getting a lot more people in the tasting room than we did before. Uh, I mean, I'm seeing things while I'm in there that are amazing. I mean, I handle the sales part of it, but it's – you know, seeing it, part of the sales is getting people into the t- tasting room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it's easier to get people in there when we have new, new and different things going on. Absolutely, absolutely, and I, I can speak for our demographic that the the '90s nostalgia will certainly, <laughs> yes. certainly be. I mean, That's we're definitely we're, the, we're your target audience right here. That's for sure. Whoa! Go. Hi. The silent auction will be closing at three o'clock. All right. Well, this isn't silent. The silent auction will be closing. <laughs> A very loud <laughs> announcement about the silent the auction. I was like, who is talking to us right now? Yeah, I thought it was something in my ears. <laughs> yeah, it was, that was bizarre. I didn't realize we were going to hear announcements. <laughs> oh that was gosh. interesting. That was fitting. Oh, wow. Silent auction is ending. The silent auction is ending. Yeah. I wonder what's for... I was saying earlier, last time we were here, they had a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. In they the silent auction. Time okay. Place, yeah. Another one? I think it went for 1200 last time. Oh, it's already well over, too. Jesus. Oh, wow. There was. I was saying to these guys earlier, there was a part of me that wanted to bid... Like a thousand. I was like, I had a few beers in me, go mm-hmm. figure. And I was like, I think I can make this work. I can make this work. And I'm so glad that I didn't even bother putting my name down. Obviously, I wouldn't have won, but like, what if I did? I didn't want to spend a thousand dollars on a bottle of whiskey. And you're like, oh. oh my, my wife has a very uh, tight rope on me right now for those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. I, I love yeah. my beer, don't get me wrong, but when it comes to whiskeys, bourbons, things like that. I, yeah, yeah, I, I recently moved in with my girlfriend, and um, I brought a lot of booze to the house. Including like three refrigerators worth of beer, but oh, like, yeah. we have a fully stocked bar. And every time I f- I try new whiskey, she's like, "Don't you dare fucking think about buying this." <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You got to drink what you have first. Yes, yes. Oh, exactly, yes. exactly. Yes. So trust me, I am working my way through the backlog of beer and whiskey at my house, so I can buy more. But <laughs> exactly. I got to be good. I don't want to be good, but I have to. Oh yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it really is. There's just so much good, so much good to drink out there. There is. It really is, is true. Man. Well, Bill, we look forward to the uh, changes coming. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We're excited to check that out. And uh, yeah, Midnight Oil Brewing Company, check them out on uh, the internet. And yep. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we update it almost daily, multiple times a day. Like I said, we have a lot of events coming up. Um, we're a whole other place that if you were there before, come back again. Yeah. It's going to be totally different from what you were. That's awesome. Sounds pretty cool to look me. Look forward yeah. to it. Yeah, very much so. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thank right. you for joining awesome. us. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Cheers. 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 Still going strong and joining us at the table from Big Oyster. We have Tyler. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Thank you good. for joining us. Of course. It's my pleasure. Um, I know I said it before we started recording. Uh, I have to give you props on the uh, official uh, show for your shirt. Your shirt's amazing. Uh, Shark Tooth shirt, which you corrected me on, and that's great. Um, and, and it's from Roosevelt. So it's a fantastic company with amazing shirts. It's only fitting if we're here for Wine Dinosaur to not have a dinosaur. We could just say they're Megalodon teeth. It's still prehistoric. I love it's that. Double it dosing. Hundred yeah. percent. I feel like yeah, like it's shark stuff dosing. is like dinosaur yeah. adjacent, right? Like, it's, and everyone knows Meg Two's out now. So, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard nothing good about that movie. I, Was the first one even that great? I, I, le- I at least heard passable things about the first one, but I know people who walked out of the second one. The only oh, thing that makes a good movie is Jason Statham. Wow. Yes, that is a fact. <laughs> that's, that's it. 
That is Besides that, who else? The Transporter trilogy is one of the it's best the thing because of, of that genre of movie. I love those movies. Crank was pretty good. No, it was not. I liked Crank no. at the time. Oh, I haven't Jesus. seen Crank it in is, 20 years. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. That's going back. No, I liked no, Crank. No, And Jason Statham is probably arguably one of my favorite actors <laughs> Steph's of all opinion time. was too powerful for the recording equipment yeah, to it, deal with it in that moment. It <laughs> cracked hardcore. No, Crank was a terrible movie. Okay, maybe Ter- I need to revisit it. I would even say that Meg was better than Crank. Wow. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. Okay, maybe I, I need to revisit. Not, like, Crank was so freaking stupid. I you guys remember <laughs> Crank Yankers? Yes. Yeah. 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 That uh, was better than Crank. Oh, wow. <laughs> the domestic Furby. <laughs> <laughs> That's the all-time greatest one, man. Oh, God. This is a nice throwback already. Yeah. We're already Holy we're good start. God. Yeah. It's funny because we just had Midnight Oil on, and they were talking about how they're rebranding to, like, a 90s throwback yep. nostalgia. Yeah. Yep. Crank Anchors came back briefly on, like, Comedy Central or Paramount Plus or something. I do remember that. They did that. a new yeah. season. That wasn't, like, a 90s thing, though. That was, like, early 2000s. Early 2000s, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we have beer here. Right. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we are. The beer's here. Yeah. I, uh, I missed what beer we were pouring. Good it smells good. Shunkin Pumpkin. Starting with the pumpkin. There's the spice. It's, that's it's, why I smell spice. It's that time of year. We all know yeah. it. It's basic white girl season. They want it. Yeah, it certainly is. I don't know the last time I had a pumpkin beer. No, me neither. Because I don't like them. Yeah, it's, I don't really seek them out. Ooh, I actually do really like this. That's a nice aroma. Super light. You are the white girl of this it's podcast. Very, oh, very hey now. <laughs> I mean. It's super light. Um, you know, nowadays we know a lot of these pumpkin beers are getting very heavy. Yeah. Uh, the ABV's up there. They're getting boozy. Um so for this, it's pretty much a nice, easy, almost like a session pumpkin that's yeah. still flavorful and easy to drink. It's very drinkable. It's, it's super drinkable. Very yeah. drinkable. It's, Is there any actual pumpkin in it? So we have a little bit of pumpkin spice. Obviously, your 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 typicals of your nutmeg, your clove, and mm-hmm. all that cinnamon. Um, but yeah, um, no pumpkin for sure, um, or else that would be a very messy situation. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we keep it easy uh, as much as we can. Um, but it's, like you said, it brings you all the flavors that you would want from a pumpkin beer into mm-hmm. the pumpkin beer right way. Yeah, it's still, I mean, it's not my, you know, preferred flavor, flavor profile. Um, but I like that it's not over the top. Yeah. Like, it, exactly. it, it drinks it's really very easy. very well balanced. It's, it's very clean. It's refreshing. Easy, yeah. easy drinking. Yeah, and it does it, it tastes like it would be thick, but it's not thick. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Makes and, sense. That's, and that's what I love about most of the beers that we do, like especially when it comes to our sours. We know where the sour market is going right now, and it's all these heavy fruit smoothie like things, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it just kills you with all the, like the sugar. But like we're still able to do what we do with what we do to give you all those flavors with something that still drinks enjoyable and light. You guys um, are getting real glassware. Oh, oh, we're getting official exciting. glassware now. Is, is hooking us up. Representing. <laughs> Look oh, thank this. you. Yes. I thank you. It. Very cool. Thank you. Awesome. It's official now. Oh, man. The last one. Uh, but yeah, the best I can say is I don't hate this. Wow. I'm not, I'm not a pumpkin beer fan. I'll take any win as a win. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no? yeah, as far as a pumpkin beer goes, like, yeah, it's it's it's. It's not crazy. And that's, uh, it's yeah. just, we heard yesterday. We did a festival out in Littitz, PA yesterday. Oh, and, oh uh, the Littitz Beer Fest. Oh, we were, we yes. were there. We were, we were almost there. We were there, <laughs> and we were pouring pumpkin, and a lot of people, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, I'm not a big pumpkin fan, but I can yeah. drink this. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, when I it mean, comes to sours, too, a lot of people are not sour fans. Right. So until we say, you pay for the ticket, might as well try it. And yeah. they're like, oh, I actually. That's a good, that's a fair I way to put it. I don't mind drinking it, so yeah. I can actually drink this. Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's more. It's more the pumpkin spice yes, part of that. It's like exactly. the, the spices you use with the pumpkin in the pie. Uh-huh. And I think a lot of other places lose sight of that's what it should be. Exactly. And then they put the pumpkin puree in there, and it really gives yeah. it this weird, earthy undertone that is not that good. Yes. But no, this this is good. It highlights the spices in the right way for and me, at did, least. We did that with uh, – so obviously it was – we did this last year. It was just uh, a special release. We did um, – obviously being pumpkin being one of our popular for fall is our best seasonal – um, and we do well with sours. So I was like, why not try to make a pumpkin sour, especially Whoa. from the cheesecake wise? So Whoa. then we, oh. yeah, we started doing a series that you know everyone knows us for the ex girlfriend series, and <laughs> it's Miss Commonly. It's it's not really about all ex girlfriends. It's just random names that we end up coming up with, and either some of them, for example, like Sarah was someone related into the company who had cancer, so we mm-hmm. made the beer out for them. So it's. We always try to do something. So then we kind of steered it into a direction, and we did a whole Greek goddess series. Oh, cool. And okay. all the Greek goddess sours were cheesecake-inspired sours because cheesecake started in Greece, Greek, Greek. 
So we kind of paired Cheesesteak started in Greece? I didn't know that's that. Why I, didn't, I didn't know either, but I guess oh. that's where we went with it. I thought it, I thought it started in New York that's City. That's exactly what I was <laughs> going to say. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Uh, so that's why we that. went with that direction. So we did a couple other. So when we first started, we did like Aphrodite. We did Persephone, which was like blackberry peach jam. Hmm. Aphrodite's was a blackberry raspberry um, cheesecake. More jam. And More then, jam. And then we end up doing Carpo. I like which jam. is the underworld, and she gets both sides. So then we figure, why not make her a pumpkin cheesecake? And it turned out really pretty good. Interesting. Which are the beers that have the lips on the can? So that's our lip series. <laughs> those? No, you don't <laughs> understand. So the lips are out this year. The, you don't understand. Those cans, that can art is freaking incredible. Yes. I love those cans. So they did make, they are in the uh, wild right now, yeah. per se. We, uh, last year, uh, we did blue and red. Um, but this year, we decided to bring two classics out. And obviously, you know, a lot of people are very familiar with Untapped nowadays. And do a lot of their stuff based off according Untapped. Um, Wait, Untapped? What is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> so we end up bringing two of our most popular, most highly rated ones, which, which, which was pink and black. Uh, pink was a raspberry vanilla condition on lemon zest, and then blackberry, I mean, black was a blackberry vanilla. Um, so they're out right now in some of the, the wild. Um, you can find them at your local stores or on draft at some of your local spots. Awesome. And the beer is good, but the can art is yes. freaking awesome. And that's what I love <laughs> about our stuff, too, is uh, the, the cans speak for themselves. Like, our cans, our artists that we had before, Laura, and now our new girl, Mandy, who does a lot of our cans, she's amazing what she does and all the you know cans stick out to you yeah um and i know for me if i'm in a pinch and i want to go buy something i never had before if i don't know care or what i want i'm going for whatever the best can looking is and that's that's what stands out to people well and speaking of the can and i know there's a really really cool story behind this beer but the west coast ipa that we are passing around now Mm -hmm. i love that the can has dinosaurs all over it perfect for this event really perfect for this event so accidentally perfect for this event exactly so the reason for never stop roaring um we actually had a family um, where their son was diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma oh, uh, no. at seven years old. Oh, no. And at eight, he lost his uh, one leg oh. because of the treatment and everything. Um, so his name's Gavin. The kid's in very good spirits. He's doing very well right now. And he's right now, he's kind of, he's in remission. So there's, he's cancer-free for right now um, with good. all the scans. But his dad's favorite beer was his hammerhead. So he said, why not do something for them to kind of help him out because... With when we did the donation event charity at the brewery is basically to help them raise money and if they were able to raise I think it was like fifty or sixty thousand dollars where they would then be able to interview doctors, then hire their doctor of their chewing through the interview process for a year and that doctor would give them updates on what he's found about childhood cancer because there's really no research right now for childhood mm-hmm. cancer. There's a bunch for adults, yeah. but there's yeah. not really yeah. much for childhood. So. That was their plan was to help them raise the money. I think they're pretty much, they've raised the money. So it's now, it's just a matter of them going through the process and hopefully they can figure out something. But this was just done at the brewery because according to the alcohol, it's, we're trying to sell the miners because of what the can looks like. So <laughs> oh man, it was just done at the brewery. Right. Um, and obviously I figure I should, might as well share it now because of course that's a dinosaur. Yeah, it's a yeah, 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 dinosaur. Yeah, but and what his, an inspiring name yeah. too. Never stop roaring. And that's what they're, yeah. what they're going through. And that's what their hashtag is. Uh, is never stop roaring. I forget Aww. the the what they did for their Instagram and all the social media spots to kind of bring a light to. I forget the foundation that they did. But like Gavin's very big in the Star Wars and dinosaurs, and his dad even has like a T Rex tattoo on himself. Aww. So it's like we wanted to do everything that we could to make this really inspired for Gavin. And when Gavin seen the scan, Gavin's whole eyes lit up about Aww. seeing the can. That's so, cool. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Was, yeah, that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to, you know, really base the can for him and not mm-hmm. everything else. <laughs> speaking, speaking of dinosaurs. Speaking of dinosaurs. Right. <laughs> our resident dinosaur is making another appearance. Oh, I guess there's one more costume Probably change coming. Their costume I mean, we were change. promised four, so. We told right. there would be four costumes. <laughs> um, Again, this, it's a nice little twist off our most famous beer that we do, obviously, is Hammerhead. Um, uh, if we didn't have Hammerhead, we probably wouldn't be in business. Um, yeah, that's what we had last time we had you guys on. I was looking it up. It's, I think if I had to say an amount, I think it's about 40% of what we do is Hammerhead. Wow. Oh, wow. So it's a large number of what we do. So, again, to, it's a fan favor, so why not give it a little twist? Of course, yeah. No, I, I love this. And it's easy drinking. Yeah. Just, you, know, you get those the, the flavors of the pineapple and the mango come in. Um, yeah. It still gives you some of that pininess that you want from a, the West Coast. Then. Yeah, I like that you get you get like that West Coast hoppiness underneath, but then there's like a tropical thing yeah. on top, which is pretty cool. Yeah. 
I also want to say I freaking love Big Oyster, the oh, thank actual you. brewery. That's a great place. Uh, Dana and I went down for an influencers weekend. I think it was like February of 2020. We were trying to remember when it was. Mm-hmm. It was 2020, yeah, because it was like just before the pandemic hit. But um, and the nachos, I don't know if the nachos are still on the mm-hmm. menu, but those nachos are some <laughs> of the best yeah. nachos on the planet. And the freaking creme brulee, oh my god, the creme brulee! But Whoa. we had such a it's good a, time. It's and a great place to be. We were there for the, the weekend and made multiple stops at the brewery. But what a cool place! And it's in Lewis. Lewis. Did yep. I say it right? <laughs> so yeah, it's just taking the biasy out of it. It's it gives you the obviously. If, Crooked Bahamic, if you guys been there with the whole outside yeah. play mm-hmm. garden. It's the same thing with us, but it's just on a grand, bigger scale. Uh, you know, it's very dog friendly. There's live music every single day during the summer. There's wow. outside stage. There's a pavilion. Um, this past summer, the owner Jeff added a half size basketball court, a full size oh, sand volleyball cool. court. Oh, okay, nice. we need to go back. We just got an outside. Uh, "Quote unquote" food truck that turned into an outside bar to help alleviate some of the bar pressure. So there's oh, cool. you know, kegerators in there to help, and they can do the mixed cocktail drinks. Hmm. So he's he's made the backyard into like a really fun atmosphere place to be for the summer. And obviously in the summer, it's just it's always booming, especially yeah, when the weather's Beach nice. Town. It's and the touristy and being right there from the ferry. You know, everyone's mm-hmm. coming over from Cape May and checking things out. So it's a good spot to be. Honestly, and obviously you can't beat the food. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And obviously the beer. It's great when you go <laughs> to a place where like the beer and the food equally are just as awesome and complement yeah. each other. And yeah. yeah, that is important. Yes. Our many visits there, we had really really good time. Our last beer is a coffee beer, Wayne. I see that. I'm excited, excited for that one. That? I am excited. I for thought that I saw one. coffee beans on one of the cans. Yep. I like the variety of the beers you guys brought today. Yeah, I wanted to give you a little bit of everything. Obviously, I wanted to do pumpkin just because it's that. Obviously, we know it's that time yeah. of year. And Which, it's, you're yeah. the only one here with a pumpkin beer. That's kind crazy. of surprising. That is surprising, yeah. And obviously, it's in most places. So I want to you know, help out the, the local people around who are you know, running the event, mm-hmm. who have their own locations to kind of help feature some of their stuff to allow them people to go back and buy it from them if they would like. Um, and then, yeah. Mm. We're at that time of year now. It's we're starting to get to that, you know, the cold weather. So, the coffee salad's a very nice option to go with. Yes, I mean, I would also drink a coffee salad any time yeah. of the year. <laughs> oh, it smells really nice. So, with the coffee salad, we paired up with Bruhaha. If you're obviously all from Delaware, very familiar. Um, so, with this guy, we actually uh, last year was when we did this. Uh, we uh, sat with those guys. We went through a few hour process of testing all the beans. So I would say after we got out of it, we were all pretty uh, wired up in general because how <laughs> much bet. coffee we were, we were drinking. It's a lot of caffeine. But we end up coming with our own blend with them. Oh, uh, cool. To really? make it very special to the beer. Um, the year before, we used Little Goat Cafe. And then once everyone kind of jumped on board of using them, it kind of lost the allure because we were the first brewery to use Little Goat. So we yeah. wanted to kind of still have the allure. So Brouhaha reached out, um, asked if we would be interested, and we went through the process and what made it, like I said, made it more special was coming up with our own blend. So mm. can you buy that blend of coffee beans? Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. It's called the, uh, what is it called? I think it's the Big Oyster blend or something. It's somewhere along that lines, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool packaging. Um, so it's definitely, it's, it's, it's a nice blend. It's like a 50-50 blend. Uh, so it's, it's, I think it's obviously great just to drink in the coffee, but yeah. obviously now putting it to the beer, it gives you that... Mm. Very upfront coffeeness. Uh, you get some of that subtle vanilla. It's yeah. The easiest way I've been telling it to people to, if you're a coffee lover and you love cold brew, it drinks almost like pretty a cold much. Brew. Yeah. yeah, just kind of drinking. Yeah, like with brew, like yeah. a tiny bit of extra sweetness that yeah. hits just right. It's um, it's very rich. Yeah, mm. I like it's, it. It's, it's, very, it's very rich. It's not as it's not thick. It's not syrupy. It's yeah, super yeah. enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And doesn't obviously with seven percent, it's not that boozy. But still, a lot of the stouts nowadays. Seven percent. That's get, what I was looking for. You yeah. can get the booziness in a lot of the stouts nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah it tastes boozier. This yeah. is one where uh, the other way. Most of the yeah. beers we've had today are like are, are higher in alcohol than you think. This one tastes boozier than yeah. It this, is, but this, I like it. It's this like tastes nice, like I'll accidentally be responsible like and this, not have that many. Like this quad we finished. Oh God. Yeah, like the quad, which did not <laughs> taste like it was ten percent. <laughs> Yeah. This tastes like it's ten percent, but it's is, not. You know, if you want to drink you know, a nice little brunch on Sunday morning instead of have this as your coffee, this is a good replacement. Yeah, hundred yeah. hmm. percent. I like it. It's very flavorful. This yeah. is like, yeah, I really like this. I really want the coffee now too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Definitely, definitely. I remember, what was the coffee beer that Weyerbacher used to do? The big release they did every year. It was a big oh barrel-aged coffee beer. No one remembers. I feel like that was and forever they would re- The one time I went to the release party, and you could they also had like little pours of the actual coffee. So you mm. could drink the beer with the coffee. And that was a really cool experience. Oh, that's that. cool. I didn't realize they did that. Yeah. So there that's you go. Great. A yeah. future idea for right. a release of this beer. There's do a brunch and have the beer and the coffee side by side. I think that's the the, the plan was. I don't know if they're doing it. Um, I don't have much on the side with the restaurant, obviously, doing all the sales stuff. But I think they used some of the beans for the they replaced in the morning. They said they talked about doing it, so I don't know if they officially mm. did. But we have a... a I mean, you can always pick up the beans and do it at home, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we still got some bags. Well, how, how far true. is the brewery from here? From here, it's about an hour and a half. Wow. Okay. okay. So it's distance. down near Rehoboth. Oh, yeah, uh, like okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's just right off the main highway there. Yeah. So it's it's a nice drive, but, you, you know, it's scenic. You go down that way. Yeah. There's nothing down there. Yeah. You throw There's a, so many great breweries down that way. Just alone, I think, now with counting breweries since the... Obviously, I look at Alchemy and Brigham and Brigham Horn being the uh, cedaries and Myeries. I think there's 32 all in total now in Delaware. Wow. Holy crap. Wow. So it's Delaware's growing for craft. Just yeah. alone down at the beach, yeah. like Thompson Islands, Dewey, us, Crook Hammock. Yeah. Obviously, we can say dogfish, but well, yeah. dogfish. Yeah. Um, Ocean View. There's so many breweries now down at that southern half. There's, I feel like there's more down there than there is up here. Mm-hmm. You Which makes to, sense, though. People yeah. want to go down there to exactly. vacation. What do you do yeah. when you're on vacation? Right. Go to the beach all day and drink all night. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> beach towns like are, are like in Jersey. Like there's a like ship bottom. I always remember. Oh right. yeah, as yeah. like um, oh just, so just that can um, encourage a lot of uh, breweries opening. The guy is yelling over the loudspeaker, so we should probably end this interview. Oh no, the silent, the not so silent auction is ending. <laughs> <laughs> but like too, if. You look, you look at that southern half of Jersey, like just alone, you have Mudhead, there's Coho, there's Cold Springs, obviously Cape May, Gusto. There's so many breweries yeah. now, just in, obviously, we talked about that short beach area, just because people are there and people want to drink. Yeah. You know? um, it's, mm-hmm. Especially now, breweries are getting more popular, craft is getting more popular, um, and more people are starting to drink craft. It's, it only makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, that's very true. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, Tyler, thank you. <laughs> We're competing welcome. with the, the raffle winners now. But, uh, <laughs> These beers, I mean, as expected, we're, we're very, very tasty. Really cool. yeah. Uh, yeah. Big Oyster now knows how to make some beers. Oh, and, we uh, appreciate it. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try, before before you officially go, I want to try something. Can you hand me the pumpkin beer? Are you going to do it? Oh, uh, hey, I'm all for experimental. I'm going to do it. There's not all right, this could, here. Yeah. this could be good. I'm all about, so we did it yesterday. Uh, it was funny enough. We had, oh, for our Lidditz, we did pumpkin, and we did our our new sour called Whale Song. It's a blueberry peach. And oh. you mixed a little bit. You did three to one blueberry peach to pumpkin. Interesting. Tastes like a cobbler, I tell you that. Okay, I could see that. I could see that. Oh, <laughs> good. Oh, good combo. This is great. Oh, my God, I love this. Right. Well, I'll bring more cans back to you guys. So <laughs> all right, thank really you. Thank you. Because now yeah. I'm curious to see what that tastes oh, like. I have to try that out. Oh, yeah. that's good. Holy shit. All right. All right, that being said, I know we're competing with this it's, announcement, it's but right. thank you so much for joining us. Thank yes, you for the thank beers, and, yeah. and we're excited to, to see how how a big, a big oyster has grown over the oh, years. It's, we're we're only continuing to get bigger and bigger, and we'll go we'll say a little. I'm sure it's public knowledge to a lot of people because it's been on the web, but it will be a new brew pub in Milford on oh, a golf sweet. course. Nice uh, on a golf course. Nice. Oh, even better, in Milford. So yeah, all right. So we'll have two full locations, pretty much the same size it is at the barn in Milford. So we're we're trying to really grow and try to look for new things going into the new year amazing That's awesome exciting. cool awesome so. well yeah continued uh, expansion and positive things well thank you yeah yeah, yeah. thank you so much for joining us oh, thank, thank you, you guys for having me thank you yeah, cheers. 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 cheers don't fear the reaper <laughs> what <laughs> well it's another one in the books i guess damn it was a good time it another was. another day of wine and dinosaurs Ooh. We didn't have any wine though. We no, had, we did no. we had lots of beer and we did experience many dinosaurs. Wine, I I, w- I would go out and get a glass of wine, but the fest is almost over because we've just we just had so much of a good time talking to all the guests and uh, chatting with Cal when he would come back around and laughing at the dinosaur that would walk by. Yes. In different costumes. We tried to get Cal to talk to us on the air, but he wasn't too interested. No. Yeah. <laughs> but we had a nice chat with him. There there were a lot of good beers. Yeah, that we had today, we had and really, really cool beers. people that we talked to. Everybody was super cool. The beers were great. 
Uh, it, it was it was just such a good time, and I'm glad that I had the idea to mix the pumpkin and the coffee one uh, from Big Oyster. It's that, been a very popular combination. Yeah, that worked out well. Everybody seems to love I, it. I'm a bit of a freak sometimes. I'm really glad we got to uh, <laughs> we got to um, have uh, some of the same breweries on, but with different people. Yeah, uh, which is always cool. And it's nice to see the way that they're growing too. You know, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. we how many how many have we talked to today that were just getting their feet off the ground? Uh, when we talked to them last time or the first time that we were here, and now they are well-established and some are rebranding in some ways to keep their brand fresh. And that's so cool. It, it's nice to see the evolution as time goes on. Very cool to see, yeah. Uh, especially like uh, like with Autumn March, like we mentioned, you know, yeah. how we, we met them when they were just starting out, and now yesterday they won a medal at GBS. That's so, so like, cool. You know, if nothing else, uh, uh, we've definitely uh, documented the rise of a lot of cool breweries. Yeah, yeah, and the Delaware scene's really picking up. Yes, that's, that's absolutely. That's amazing. Uh, Steph, you have another beer in front of you, and I know you were saving this as your last beer. Am I allowed yeah. to have some of it? Sure. I'm drinking uh, Triangle Theory, which is a lager from First State, and right. it's quite lovely. There are a few Delaware breweries that are being uh, represented by a distributor here today. Dewey, um, First State. Levante, not Delaware, but Delaware adjacent. Um, we love those guys. So it's cool that cool. some of those beers are also being offered. That is cool. I, I was going to say, I, I don't think we really need to tell our listeners about Levante. They know. <laughs> <laughs> they know all about Levante. If you haven't, then where have you been? <laughs> yeah, really. You should be drinking Levante beer. Cool guys. Uh, but this triangle, uh, Triangle Theory, it's called. Mm-hmm. I look at it and I want to say Triangle Tavern. <laughs> I yeah. was thinking that too. <laughs> yeah. They have really good food there. Yeah, they have uh, really good vegan selections mm-hmm. there. Um, but yeah, this is quite nice. Very clean. Yeah, it is. It's a good one to end the day on, I suppose. Yeah. Yes. With our gentle hands and quiet voices. Gentle hands, quiet voices. What? Those are all the different signs that are around the room. So we have. Oh, really, oh, uh, oh! The, I'm sorry, Jesus. <laughs> as we, uh, I even pointed these signs out. Yeah. As yes, we, as did. as we wrap up the day here, we haven't really um, <laughs> explained to our listeners. Thank you. I've just been handed some food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's meat on it, so it was, it was given to me because there's meat on it. Okay, awesome. All right, I was give, I was handed this food because there's meat on it. It's it's a it's a good skewer. Uh, I'm not a fan of uh, the tomatoes or the olives, but everything else on there is solid. Oh, I had one earlier. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty good. Um, um, I was just I just wanted to mention um, while we're talking about it, we haven't really mentioned the space that we're in, um, and it's kind of like a like the kids section, I guess. The nature. The nature. Nook. It's the nature nook, but it's designed. I mean, it's obviously designed for like kids to hang out in, and like it's like a fake cage and a cool mural on the wall. Cave. Uh, what did I say? Cage? cage. <laughs> there's a cave. I mean, if children are going to be in here, there probably should be a cage, but there's not. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool spot. I just wanted to paint a little theater of okay. mine. Yeah. No, it's it's a really cool area, and there's a snake over there uh, named Lady Gaga. What's the tarantula's name next to me? I forget. Shelob. Shelob? From Lord of the Rings. Oh, uh, okay. There's Zoot across the All way from us, which I haven't seen Zoot. I don't know if, like... What am I it's looking a hermit for in crab, there? I believe. Because oh. the one guy that was in here, and he's like, it's a hermit crab that actually lives more than a day. Does Zoot oh. wear a suit? And is, is there a riot? riot? And is there a riot? <laughs> God damn. We really are old. A fucking teenager <laughs> earlier snorted, said how old we and are. And it kind of hurt. <laughs> Good lord. This, this has been an incredible day. Uh, I, you know, I think we've said it every time that we've recorded here. If you listening to this uh, have not been... Well, this is going to be two things. If you haven't been in Delaware to have beer in Delaware, go to a Delaware brewery because yeah. this this is like this is incredible to see how the the scene has grown. And we may have mentioned it on or off mic, I don't remember, but usually people when you think of Delaware beer, you think of Dogfish. Dogfish obviously is a fantastic brewery who has done a lot and are trendsetters in many, many ways, but there are a lot of smaller breweries around here that are so cool and kicking out great great beers. And and we had a really nice selection of them today. So get your ass to Delaware and drink some beer in Delaware. Hi, I'm in Delaware. <laughs> I say that every time I cross the border. <laughs> we were in the middle of some conversation while we were driving here. And as soon as we crossed the border, hi, I'm in Delaware. And then just back to whatever we were talking about. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Mm. But this has been cool. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, people and, and organizations we need to thank. So first and foremost, of course, thank you to the Delaware Museum of Nature and... S- <laughs> Nature. The Museum of Nature. Nature. <laughs> we didn't even drink that much today. Not what really. <laughs> Please leave that in. Of course. <laughs> Thanks to the Delaware Museum of Nature and Science. 
Of course, thank you to the Wine and Dinosaurs Committee, especially Cal. We had a, a really nice conversation with Cal off mic right before recording this outro. And we met and his successor. Yes. Uh, he introduced us to his son who is going to probably take over some more duties as he uh, you know, progresses within the committee. But Cal has plans in mind for breweries he wants to get for this event. And I felt a, a little, you know, soft, uh, the warm spot inside when he said he wants to think of breweries that we haven't met yet. Like, he's keeping us in mind when he books breweries for this. That is so cool, and I'm honored. Uh, but this wouldn't be possible without him. And, and thank you to Cal and everybody. Uh, I, of course, have to say thanks to our unofficial interns, Rich and Dana, for wrangling the guests. Uh, of course, thank you to all of the guests. And uh, I, I mentioned that I would I would give these guys a plug. Thank you to Toscana Catering for feeding us while we were recording. They were the caterer for the event. All the <laughs> food walking was, by as we speak. Yeah, <laughs> uh, all the food was amazing. There was this really good like chicken parm slider that was so good. Uh, Rich pointed out to me that out in the uh, real world with the the proletariat people, there were uh, <laughs> buffalo chicken. I say that knowing they're all much wealthier than I am. Um, <laughs> there were buffalo chicken meatballs with a ranch drizzle. There was some kind of tortellini that was just to die for. It was all really good. They have a restaurant. It is 1412 North DuPont Street in Wilmington. Uh, If you want to find out more about them, it is piccolinatoscana.com. Uh, if you find yourself in the area, eat that food. It's really good. Yeah, I, like, eat I, that food. Eat that, eat that, I, I want to I want to come back into Delaware just to go to this restaurant. Eat that food. Oh, we're getting a beer drop. Oh, a beer oh, drop. Thank you. Thank Your mom you. has just been delivered. Oh, God. That was so good. <laughs> thank you, Bill. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bill. Uh, I love the last minute beer drops. Tyler brought more of the cans of the uh, the, the, the coffee and the coffee. pumpkin one so we, so could, we could, mix could mix more of them. Mix, yeah. He was impressed with it. I, I felt very vindicated by that. Dan is just like the, the beer alchemist with like, mixing. I, yeah, yes. I will give him that, yeah. that title. Just, you, you, there are two flavors you think are going to work. Just try them. Two great tastes that taste great get together. Exactly. Exactly. Hashtag no laws. Exactly, indeed. Uh, another thanks I need to give is, of course, you listening to this. Thank you for, for listening. Uh, this was so cool. I really hope that you find it in you to get to this event next year uh, and, and, you know, tell a friend and everything. Um, but get want- tickets. It sells out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you want to follow along with the madness, you, you know you know the drill. Uh, we're on the internet, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok, threads, all the good stuff at Beer Busters. Uh, Facebook, we are Beer Busters Podcast. There's BeerBustersPodcast.com where you can add slash shop. Rich is showing us a picture of an owl right now, oh which is really God. cool. Baby owls. Two owls. Oh, I want to go see those owls. Baby Aww. owls. Uh, YouTube, we're Beer Busters Podcast. And then there's Patreon.com slash Beer Busters where all the cool behind the scenes stuff. You can get to uh, for a dollar a month at the least. More is appreciated. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but as little as a dollar a month gets you access to all that. And it keeps our podcast running. Yes. 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 We get to do cool things like this. Uh, I, I, I have had a blast. This has been incredible. Yeah, I'm this was a lot of fun. So glad we got to do it. It's always an amazing event. And, and today was no exception to that. Yeah. Absolutely. But unfortunately, I think this does bring us to the end. Hold that thought. <laughs> Let me unmute the iPad. <laughs> this does unfortunately bring us to the end. There, there we go. Is. Of another episode of Beer Busters. The best part is the cable's staticky, so i got to fix this in post anyway, but I'm leaving my flub in there. I think it will be harder to edit to your flub than to not. Probably. <laughs> this this has been so cool. Uh, uh, it's just, it's it's been great. Um, and it was fun to do it in person again. Yes. Yeah, I feel like yeah, we've been missing that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I am Dan Baker, joined by my co-host and brewologist. Steph Hefner. And of course, the demented and fermented Wayne Baker. Remember, it's not about the liquid, it is about the experience. And this experience involved wine, dinosaurs, and of course, beer. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Are you secretly British, Dan? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> pip, pip, cheerio. <laughs>